The holiday sale is underway at Full Throttle Power Sports in Gastonia. Apply today, ride today. Good credit, bad credit, no credit. Full Throttle Power Sports in Gastonia can help. Ask about zero money down and rates as low as 2.9%. Pick up this week's WhatsApp Shopper for some great buys. Don't miss the big holiday sale underway now at Full Throttle Power Sports. Located at exit 22 off I-85 in Gastonia. Jim and Jay's Pizza Factory is Shelby's home for family food and fun. Jim and Jay's features a pizza buffet with salad bar. Plus there's a game room. Adult buffet is just $5.99. This price good all day, every day, no coupon needed. Buffet for ages 4 through 10, just $3.09, and ages 3 and under, free. Call for information on birthday parties at 704-600-6182. So come on in, locally owned and operated, Jam and Jay's Pizza Factory, 1011 Grove Street, behind the Golden Corral in Shelby. New owner, new attitude. That's Forest City Honda, voted the best new car dealer in Rutherford County for the second straight year. And Forest City Honda's Greg Huntley has been named the best car salesperson for the second straight year. Plus, the Honda Dealers of the Carolinas has named the Forest City Honda Service Department the best in the Carolinas by a vote of its customers. Forest City Honda, ready to serve you with the best cars, best service, and the best salespeople. Forest City Honda, Daniel Road, Forest City. The leaves are falling and so are the prices at SNR Auto Sales in Shelby. Now is the time to hurry into SNR Auto Sales in Shelby for great fall savings. And down payments start as little as $699. Pick up this week's WhatsApp Shopper for their selection or visit their website at srautosales.com. And be sure to play their sports trivia question of the week. The leaves are falling and so are the prices at SNR Auto Sales in Shelby. Your buy here, pay here headquarters and the home of the satisfied customer. Year-round fun begins at the Bargain Station brand name outlet on East Dixon Boulevard in Shelby. Keep cool with bobbles. Bobble in sets are just $6.99 and complete bottle sets are $9.95. You'll find luggage and bags, sporting equipment including golf clubs, grills for cooking and much more. All at big, big savings to you. The Bargain Station name brand outlet, 4400 East Dixon Boulevard in Shelby, right next to Honda Motorcycles. Open Tuesday through Friday, 930 to 6, Saturdays 9 till 2. Your Yoda Wood Stove dealer is Future Energy Company in Shelby. Come on in now and see how you can save $1,000 on a new Yodel Wood Stove. And be sure to ask about the Yodel Limited Lifetime Warranty. And one easy air control lever will operate the entire stove. Come on in and see the big selection of Yodel Wood Stoves on display at Future Energy Company, 130 West Graham Street in Shelby. Go to the website at futureenergyco.com for more information on the full line of Yoda wood stoves. America's Mattress Event is underway at Hendrick Appliance and Mattress Center in Shelby, Lincoln, and Gastonia. Get up to 60 month financing, plus free delivery, free setup, free removal, and free bed frame. Pick up a Serta Perfect Sleeper or a Serta Memory Foam Queen Size Mattress for just $299. Get the sleep you need, guaranteed. Hendrick Appliance and Mattress Center, 1241 East Dixon Boulevard in Shelby, 4027 East Franklin Boulevard in Gastonia, and in the Carolina Shopping Center in Boger City. Former club members Denzel Washington and Jennifer Lopez for the Boys and Girls Clubs. Every child follows a path in life. For many, that path will lead them to a door, a door that gives them a place to grow, to learn, to belong, a place to forge their future. You can change a child's future. Support your local Boys and Girls Clubs. Great futures start here. You can open doors for children to have great futures at the Boys and Girls Club of Cleveland County. Visit us at 412 West Sumter Street or at greatfutures.org. Bundle it up. That's the way to save. And it's true with Farm Equipment 2. That's why West End Sales in Vail has bundled up a 2013 
35 horsepower diesel Coyote tractor with a loader and a four year warranty. Plus a new equipment trailer and a new six foot box blade all for $17,500 or get payments as low as three oh one per month with zero money down. See West End for all the details. West End. They'll do it again tonight. They definitely, they definitely want to take it. And I'll tell you what, Brent, I, I, I think everyone is going to agree with you. It's okay to say tonight because this is the only time that we haven't said tonight. And uh, so you are forgiven to, uh, even though we know it's almost 11 a.m., you can still say tonight. Uh, uh, you know, all, all those years of listening to Woody Durham and those guys do Carolina basketball games, and I used to always wonder, why they say tonight? It's Saturday afternoon. Well, now I know exactly how they feel. Yeah, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it, unfortunately. We're not going to be able to show you the game live. I'll keep it on the scoreboard on the opposite side if they put the score up on the big screen. We'll uh, we'll put the we'll put the camera on that too. Principal David Allen just came up and gave us a good luck, and of course, good luck to him and his Chevy High Golden Lions that he leads in the classroom and, and through the academics. And uh, and coach, we're getting ready to kick it off. Team captains for Shelby: Chris Boykins down there. I see Greg Ager, Malik McDaniel, and number 50. Is that Hill Morgan? I believe that's Hill Morgan. So Hill been injured this season, hasn't been able to play. Malik McDaniel also injured, so Shelby doing a nice gesture getting those guys a chance uh, to be team captains uh, tonight, this afternoon, this morning, all the above. And now Southwest Oslo takes the field, and we're just about ready to kick off this 2A state championship. We thank you, Cleveland Regional Medical Center for sponsoring our in-stadium pregame show. Medical Arts Pharmacy, our scoreboard sponsor. Hopefully, Shelby will be lighting that up throughout the game tonight and today and this morning. <laughs> I'm going to do it all day. I know I'm going to. Now I say day. Excellent. Well, Shelby I, and I tell you, it, I, I am just, just exceptionally excited. And uh, having said that, we are now having the national anthem, Brent. So, Steve Roberts, give us a uh, three minute break and we'll come back with a kickoff. In sales, Highway 18274 intersection in Vail. Or for more information, go to westinsales.com. Transportation Administration of Cleveland County and Cleveland County Transit would like to take this time to remind everyone that illegal drug use breaks hearts, homes, and lives. Please stay involved in your children's lives. Speak with your children about drug use and how it can destroy family dreams. Also, be sure your children and family members buckle up when they are in the car, and if the car is on, leave the phone alone. The staff at TAC and CCT are glad to be celebrating our 25th year of service to Cleveland County. The Big Three are ready for flu season. Come get your flu shots now at Medical Center Pharmacy in Cherryville, Falston Pharmacy in Falston, and Allen Drug in Stanley. They're your hometown pharmacy with no appointment necessary. So hurry in now and get ready for flu season. Get your flu shots now at Medical Center Pharmacy, 607 East Academy Street, Cherryville, the Falston Pharmacy, Highway 18 North in Falston, and Allen Drug Store on Main Street in Stanley just below the woodshed. Stamey Funeral Home, serving Cleveland and surrounding counties since 1900. Stamey Funeral Home is owned and operated by the Tysinger family, loving and caring licensed professionals. Our family is here for your family during one of the most difficult periods in life, planning, pre-planning, or pre-need counseling. We're here to listen, care, and help. That's what families are all about. Stamey Funeral Home, located in Faustin, our family serving your family. Kenny Salinas Power Sports service is a top priority. Their fully trained staff all ride the products they offer to ensure that you get the best service possible. They have an 18,000 square foot facility filled with a huge selection of motorcycles, four wheelers, jet skis, and more. On the water, street, or off road, they do it all. McKenny Salinas Power Sports is your officially licensed Suzuki, Honda, and Kawasaki dealer. 4804 Wilkinson Boulevard. Call 704 824 2787 or online at mscycles.com.
Hi, this is Woody Durham for Mark Detman's Carolina Trophies in Shelby. Through the years, I've seen a lot of trophies and plaques, and none appear nicer than those which come from Mark Detman's Carolina Trophies. Their guarantee is not just a guarantee, but a promise for courteous service, the absolute lowest price, quality products, on-time delivery, and most of all, your satisfaction. Awards for all occasions, plus rubber stamps and engraving. That's Mark Dedman's Carolina Trophies in Shelby. I, I did run into uh, Chris Norman just a few seconds ago, and I looked at him and I said, Chris, I'm not nearly as nervous as I was uh, the last time that you and I were at this place. And he agreed. Uh, but uh, we are we're exceptionally excited, and uh, here we are. Uh, they are now, you know, introducing the captains are being introduced to each other the officials talking to them giving them some last second instructions and uh, we should be uh, finding out who's going to be kicking off who's going to be receiving this is uh, this is one of the most nerve-wracking time for the players and coaches because uh, if you ever look down there you'll notice at a big game that none of the players are standing still they're bobbing from one side to the other one foot to the other because they are just ready to get this thing started and so the official has walked over He's tapping the Golden Lions, and they will receive. And so you couldn't ask for uh, a better coin toss that way. No, it's exactly what the Golden Lions coaches, players, and announcers wanted, and that's the ball to start the 2A state championship game. Shelby will receive, and that means playmakers Antoine Wright, Chad Reed, they'll be back deep looking to make something happen for the Golden Lions and start them off in good field position for Southwest Onslow, it'll be uh, Tristan Hartley, the kicker, making his way out to do the kickoff duties. And we're just about underway here at Keenan Stadium. Coach, uh, you play all year to get to this one, and uh, we're finally here. Well, I like the way Coach, Coach Ware put it. He said, you know, this is the last game. I mean, you made it to the last game. You don't have to worry about next week. I mean, you just do everything you can this week, and uh, we're about to find out. Uh, if the Golden Lions are going to be able to bring back their 11th state championship in football. Five in the Western Association and hopefully their sixth in the State Association. The Carolina Tar Heel football players have been practicing bowl week or, uh, in preparation for their bowl game. They're back here right behind Antoine and, and Chad watching this kickoff. So a little extra fans back there. Uh, and I'm always a believer in, in the stars shine on the biggest stage. So let's hope Shelby's uh, top players come out tonight and, and have their best performance of the season. Absolutely. And it's Tristan Hartley. He's got it teed up for Southwest Onslow. And the kickoff, it's a squib kick. It's bouncing and it's fielded at the 27-yard line by Buck Usry, and he cuts back over the 35 across the 40, and Shelby's going to start off in great field position about the 41-yard line. Great field position for the Golden Lions here, 11:52. We just now started, and so it's good to get those uh, get a, get a few of those butterflies out of the way. And Golden Lion offense making their way onto the field, and uh, they'll they'll get over the ball and get ready to start this football game. And right away, Shelby comes out already set. R.J. George in the shotgun, flanked by Jaquavis Brooks and Raquan Washington. Two receivers right, one left. And on first down, goes in motion as Raquan Washington the handoff to Jaquavis Brooks, and he's hit for a loss of about three and a half, four yards on first down. Definitely the way that the Southwest Onslow Stallions wanted to start off. They sent a run blitz right up the gut, did a great job, and uh, I tell you, the best thing we can say about that is we didn't fumble the ball because that, that, that had fumble written all over it, Brent Pasco. Second and 14 right away, and Shelby goes with an empty backfield and five, count them, five receivers, four right, one left. Southwest Onslow showing blitz, and they bring the defensive ends. Play is blown dead. I don't see a hanky down. Looks like Shelby took a timeout. And Shelby with a timeout. We'll take a 30-second break and be right back. We all hear about how good the barbecue is in Lexington, Greensboro, and in eastern North Carolina. But here in Cleveland County, we all know that the best barbecue is here. At Austin Bridges Barbecue, Kent and Linda Bridges and their family make sure the staple of their restaurant is the best barbecue. 
Your choice, pork, beef, or chicken, plus delicious sides, such as slaw, beans, fries, and husk puppies. The best since Alston and Mabel opened in 1955. Alston Bridges Barbecue, 620 Grover Street, right here in Shelby. Their first time out, not sure what was going on there. Shelby with a little different look as they, they went with an empty backfield, but four receivers to one side and one to the other after a four-yard loss on first down. But nonetheless, Shelby burns a timeout, and they come out in a different formation this time with a running back. Extremely Brooks. wide trips over here to the right side. Southwest just has three, two DBs to cover three. And Shelby's going to throw a screen to the other side to Jaquavis Brooks. He catches it, but he's hit immediately and dropped for another loss. Tackle made by 85, Jimmy Taylor. And the Golden Lions are going backwards early. We've been talking about those, uh, you wonderful, you, you, you hate those uh, play calls that you have to make. This is third and 18, two four-yard losses, and you've got to be impressed with how Southwest Onslow has come out here at the very beginning. Third and 18 Golden Lions, not what the doctor ordered on the opening drive. And George back to pass. He's got time. He's over the middle, and it's caught. Antoine Wright, he's to the 50. He's got first down. He's inside the 50 to the 40. Stiff arm. He's still on his feet inside the 40 to the 38. Pickham Insurance first down for the Golden Lions. Big, big play. Third and 18, and so what you do, pick up about 27. Got to love that, Brent Pasco. First that, and 10. That was that crossing route, and the protection gave RJ enough time to find the open right, and then Wright did what he always does, and that's make guys miss. And Shelby's in business at the Southwest Onslow 38 yard line, first and 10. Should be a five yard penalty on Southwest Onslow. The Golden Lions uh, drew them off sides, and they sure did, number 85 who we've already called his name a few times. He jumped out, he jumped off sides. And again, number 85, that is Jimmy Taylor, who had a big play earlier and now a big play for the Golden Lions. That last pass play covered 29 yards for the Golden Lions and a Pigram insurance first down. And now it's first and five from the Onslow 33. And it's a handoff to Raekwon Washington. He's across the 30, 25, 20, breaks a tackle, 15. And he's taken out of bounds inside the 10. He's down to the nine. First and goal, Golden Lions. Another very nice play on first and five. Went into pistol formation and handed the ball to Raekwon. And Raekwon was not touched until he got about 13 yards into the secondary. First and goal at the nine for the Golden Lions, quickly over the ball. Pigram insurance first down. R.J. George looks to the sidelines. He's got Jaquavis Brooks to his right. Ralph Jolly, wide right, three receivers left. And on first down, it's a pass play caught by Kylon Ross. And Kylon tried to get to the outside. Nice tackle by number one, Javion Walker, to get that for a no gain. Very impressive uh, play by Walker. Uh, Walker was able to defeat the block and make that play. It was really a two-on-one situation, but uh, exceptionally good play by Walker. I, I liked the look of that play when we threw it out there, but uh, Walker just did a great job. Now we are back into a completely empty set for the Golden Lions. Second down nine, you might see a run here. And it's not, he's going back, and he does take off running. And that's R.J. George spins down to the five-yard line. One of the things that we've talked about all year, RJ has a great ability to uh, get away from the first rusher and make a good decision, and he did that time, picked up a good four yards, and so third and five, this is another big play for the Golden Lions, Brent. Third down and goal. Shelby with one back to Quavis Brooks as Michael Gallette split wide left. It's Jolly in the slot, Ross and right split wide to the right. Onslow showing a five-man front. And in motion goes Brooks. And back to throw is George, and he's got a man. It's tipped and falls incomplete. Nice defensive play by Southwest Onslow, and Shelby's going to bring Luke Hayek out to attempt what's going to be about a 22-yard field goal. 22-yard field goal. I was talking to Luke. Uh, Luke's in my homeroom class, and he asked me, he said, Coach Jones, will we have high school goalposts out here? And I said, yes, Luke, they will bring in high school goalposts. And for those of you that don't know, High school hashes are much wider than college hashes, and uh, so so are the goalposts. So Luke Hikes is, is in for the kick. Low snap, right handles it, kicks up, kicks good. Shelby takes an early 3 or nothing lead with 8.42 left first quarter. 
Gold Lions three to nothing back in 30 seconds for a Jam and Jay's Pizza Factory kickoff. Yes, Cleveland County, you do have a train dealer. From Kings Mountain to Polkville, from Lawndale to Bellwood, from Falston to Earl, Roland Black Heating and Air will be there for you. They're only a phone call away at 704-865-1375. In minutes, a comfort specialist will be at your door for your heating or cooling needs. Yes, it's hard to stop a train. Again, call Roland Black Heating and Cooling at 704-865-1375. Your hometown train dealer for over 36 years. Blood. They take a three to nothing lead over Southwest Onslow. Opening drive that went from the Shelby 41 to the Southwest Onslow five yard line and ended in a Luke Hayek 22 yard field goal. And the Gold Lions have the lead early. Well, now we talk about one of the things that we were uh, discussing in pregame Luke Hayek's ability to make a good high kickoff and the Gold Lions having to get down and do a good job covering this kick. It is cold enough, Brent. I'm just I'm shivering just a little bit because the heating elements over us don't work. Uh, uh, this ball is not going to travel as well as you'd like because it is cold. Well, Hayek's Jam and Jay's Pizza Factory is a high kickoff taken at the five yard line. And that's Walker, and he's out across the 20, and he's got a seam. He's to the 30, still on his feet. He's across the 40, and in the Shelby territory at about the 49-yard line. No flags on the field, and Southwest Oslo gets a great return by Walker, and they'll start smack down on the 50-yard line. Well, a nice high kick that went 55 yards, but uh, I tell you what, we've already called Walker's name about three times tonight. Uh, I've said it now tonight, and uh, it uh, – they really have speed, and that's the thing that you know this doesn't surprise us. We knew they would be they would be a speedy group, but uh, field position uh, definitely in favor of Southwest Onslow now. It's Jonathan Williams at the quarterback spot, Wimbush, and on first down, it's a handoff to one of the receivers. That's number two, and he's going to get about four, carried by Aurelio Adi, and Adi gets about four. On uh, first down, going to call it second and six. Second and six, it's uh, pretty much a, a sweet play, pulling one guard and doing a good job of reaching the end man of the line of scrimmage. We almost got a play on him, uh, but almost is uh, one, of the, one of the saddest words of all time. So second down and six. And Williams bring his team to the line of scrimmage again. The guy goes in motion again, hand it off. And Shelby all over this. It's a couple of yard gain, going to bring up a third and four. And that was Adi again on the same play. Same play. This time, Golden Lions were forced it back inside quickly, and then it was met by about five different Golden Lion tacklers. Third down and four. And I tell you what, I don't know if Southwest Onslow is not already thinking that they're in four-down territory. At the Shelby 44, centered quickly over the ball. Walker split wide right. And it's Wimbush and Williams in the backfield. And w Williams rolls to his right, and he's got a man deep. And that's Walker. And he's got coverage by Shelby, but he comes down with a catch. Touchdown, Southwest. As Demario Houston jumps up trying to make the interception, he had coverage, and Walker out jumped him for the ball and comes down with it at about the 10, turns around and walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Stallions. Well, nice throw, nice catch by the Stallions that time. And we were talking uh, in the last ball game about how we hadn't seen Demary Houston give up a big play. And uh, unfortunately, we have now seen that happen. He had good coverage. The ball just got over his head. And that took all of about a minute and 30, 25 seconds for Southwest to score. Extra point is good. And we'll go to a break with Southwest leading the goal line 7-3. to three. Back for a Jam and Jay's Pizza Factory kickoff right after this. When accidents happen, it's reassuring to know that quick expert care is nearby. Carolina's Health Care Urgent Care Shelby is now open and is staffed with experienced physicians, mid-level providers, nurses, and support personnel equipped with on-site laboratory and x-ray services. So keep our new location and contact information close by for immediate access to the region's preferred health care and largest physicians network. Carolina's Health Care Urgent Care. 1010 East Dixon Boulevard, Shelby.
Shelby Savings Bank. It's, it's just, just better, better here. here. With local decisions. Better. Flexibility. Better. And knowing how to treat people. It's just better. Better. It's just better here. We're here to help our neighbors do better. It's just better here. With our best deal mortgage guarantee. It's just better. 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 Better here. Great products. It's just better here. And two convenient locations. It's just. It's just better here. <laughs> now more than ever, Shelby Savings Bank. It's just better here. Member FDIC. Shelby takes over in good field position at the 46. Let's call it the 47. So it's been both return games giving field position to both offenses. And Shelby takes over trailing 7-3. to three. This time it's Chad Reed in the backfield for the Golden Lions. And the pistol formation this time. And it's... George looking to the sideline. He's got Wright and Ross to his right. He's got Gallette to his left. Jolly is also to his right in the slot. And now Reed is beside George, and he'll get the handoff. And he's up to the 50 and just across the 50-yard line. Gets about three, maybe three and a half. Good hard run that time by Chad Reed. Tell you what, Brent, I would like to have a nickel for every time this year we said good hard run by and then insert the name of a Golden Lion running back. And he actually does get four yards on that, about two yards on his own. Second down, six, and the ball just inside Southwest Territory at the 49. Shelby in the same formation, except this time Reed is to R.J. George's left. And George takes the snap, and he hands it off again to Reed, and Reed's hitting the backfield for a loss of a yard, and Shelby's going to face a third down and seven. Good penetration by the Stallions' defense. Absolutely. We pulled the backside guard that time and weren't able to cut him off with the backside tackle, and so the man that was on the guard actually made the hit. That's a guy that you don't want to have to have to think about because you want your backside tackle to be able to make that block. But tell you what, the Stallions, they do have speed. That was the thing that we knew coming in. Third and seven, now it's Brooks in at running back. Two receivers left and right, and Brooks goes in motion. Ball's on the ground, George picks it up, and he makes one guy miss, and he's gonna eat it. He's sacked back at the Shelby 43. And that's a loss of about seven, and George is on the ground. Slow to get up, and Shelby's going to be forced to punt. Fourth down, 14, and George a little slow coming off the field. You have to keep an eye on that. Maybe go down here in a little bit to uh, Kevin Hastings and see if he can give us an update here in a couple of minutes. George now making his way off the field, so Golden Lions in uh, punting formation. Luke Hayek takes the snap, steps forward. And it's not a bad punt, a little short. It takes a Shelby bounce and then rolls just inside the 20 down at the 18 yard line. Southwest will take over. So uh, Shelby does a decent job of uh, pinning Southwest back. A 39 yard punt, it was not a thing of beauty, but uh, it's not about how pretty it is, it's how many yards it is. It's 39 yards, no return. So you gotta love that. All right, Southwest first and 10 from their 18, their second drive of the game. First one resulted in a three play and a touchdown, that being a 44-yard pass to Walker. And on first down, it's the option, and Williams is keeping it, and he's to the 20 and swarmed under just across the 20-yard line. He picks up about three yards. That's a pretty exciting three-yard play right there. He, uh, he made two moves that uh, – I really can't describe. I mean, that was, uh, he, fa he faked the pitch and then made two guys miss him. And uh, that was a pretty special play, Brent. It was second down seven, though, for Southwest. Walker split wide left and wide right is Bill Lovewell. And uh, it's another play, misdirection. And that's 29 Corbins on the carry. Corbin's hit immediately and dropped for a yard loss. I believe that was number four, Clay Husky, on that play, I do believe. And now Shelby's defense has Southwest in a third and eight situation. A passing down, but uh, Southwest can pick up yards running it or throwing it with their speed. Third and eight, Williams in the shotgun, and he rolls right, and he does a shovel pass that's 
incomplete. Almost picked off by Shelby's 53, Robert Brown. So a much better defensive series that time. We uh, uh, we got immediate pressure. Now, in a shovel pass, it's somewhat like a screen pass. You do let the guys come through, but we came through so quickly that it kind of disrupted, uh, disrupted the pitch. And so a great job by the goal line defense that time. Southwest struggling to get enough players on the field. And back in punt formation. Snap is kind of slow. Shelby with good pressure and the kicks end over in and short and it takes a Shelby bounce and Shelby's going to take over and great field position as that punt goes just 16 yards and Shelby takes over at the Southwest 36 yard line. Great, great job by the goal line defense and uh, we flip field position one more time. So 352 left in the first quarter. Golden Lions starting almost in field goal range. R.J. George back out on the field for the Golden Lions. That's a good sign. He is going to have Jaquavis Brooks in at running back. So since that that carry by Raekwon of 24 yards down to the nine, we haven't seen him. So let's hope he's okay. First and ten Golden Lions. George in the shotgun. And he's going to drop back to pass. And he's looking deep. And he's got a man in the seam. That's Ralph Jolly. And Jolly makes a great catch inside the 15. Pickham Insurance first down, Golden Lions at the Southwest 12-yard line. Pickup of 24. Good throw, good catch. Uh, RJ did a great job. There was a little bit of pressure coming from his left, but he stepped forward. And uh, Golden Lions now back in the in the Wildcat formation. Uh, Raekwon Washington in to take the snap. Washington's in with Buck Ussery and Chad Reed at running back spot. Antoine right to his left, and he's going to keep it. And he's running around the left side. Now he's running backwards. He reverses field. He's all the way back to the 30-yard line, and he's got all kinds of Southwest players. He's to the 25, and a, a poor decision by Raekwon is he's going to lose about 12, 13 yards on that play. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not what you want. Uh... Southwest did a great job um, initially of making a play, and uh, you just can't turn around and go the opposite way when you're running and you're playing against a team with as much speed as they have. That kind of thing would work against the team we played in the first round, and the second round of the playoffs, but it's not going to work today. So, Golden Lions back up now, second and goal from their 24-yard line. A loss of 12 on first down, and on second and 24, George back. He gets pressure. He goes to the air, and it's complete to Ant or Kylon Ross, and he's inside the 10, so he gets the 12 yards they lost back plus three more, and, and he's going to bring up a third and seven. And I was wrong. I did say second and goal, but actually we can get a first down at the two, so that puts us third down and seven. Third and seven, and that's a 17-yard pickup and just what Shelby needed after that big loss. Touchdown, Golden Lions. Michael Gallette, and that's from nine yards out. Touchdown, Golden Lions, and back on top goes Shelby. 9-7, pinning this Luke Hayek extra point. And I tell you, Michael Gallette can go up in the air, Jeff Jones. And that time he did just that for the touchdown catch. What a great throw and catch that time. Hayek in. Good snap this time. And, of course, the other team jumps off sides like always. <laughs> now, one of the things that I noticed in our earlier film when uh, Southwest Onslow was playing and the team jumped off sides, they went ahead and put their offense back in to try to go for a two-point conversion because they don't feel quite as good about their kicking game. But uh, Golden Lions tend to just uh, decline this penalty and try to kick it again. And they'll do just that. Richard Wright will do the holding. Trip Camp to do the snapping. Tough snap, but Wright comes up with it and Hikes kicks good. Let's take a one minute break and be back for a Jam and Jay's Feature Factory kickoff. Here's a special money saving message from Putnam Distributors in Patterson Springs. If you use petroleum products, you should consider a generic brand. Major brands charge premium rates covering national advertising and promotions. Good generic brand packages their own products and meets manufacturer specifications, and they can sell at a lower price because of lower overhead. Our generic brands include Wolfhead, Coastal, AutoGuard, and LubriGuard. Buy these brands and you cut your costs. See Putnam Distributors, 1626 Peterson Drive, Patterson Springs.
Here, lizard, lizard, lizard. Oh, no, it's total mayhem. Hurry, call your good neighbor. You can't. They're not even there. Why, they can't even lend a good hand. Oh. Relax. At Pigram Insurance, we've got you covered. Pigram Insurance Agency. 220 West Dixon Boulevard in Shelby and in the Town & Country Shopping Center in Lincoln. Shelby's taking the lead with 2.11 left first quarter. They lead Southwest 10-7. R.J. George hooks up with Michael Gallette on a nine-yard touchdown reception and the senior wide receiver puts Shelby up. Luke Hayek to kick off and he gets a pretty good leg into this one. It's going to be taken again inside the 10, this time at the eight. And Shelby with much better coverage this time as the, the return man is quarterback Jonathan Williams and he gets just to the 15 yard line. Really good job that time. What uh, Southwest was doing was they were trying to return toward their sideline. And so Luke ends up kicking it way on the other side of the field. And when that happens, uh, sometimes you just need to tell your receiver just to bring it up that sideline where he was, but he tried to take it across the field and. Both these teams have enough speed to where you're not going to be able to run sideways and make yarders. First and 10, Onslow. We haven't seen Wimbush with a carry yet. He's the leading rusher. And on first down, it's Wimbush, and he trips and falls. He loses a yard, tackled by Robert Brown and Adam Weber. Well, I tell you what, also, uh, also we had big number 10 in there and uh, I tell you what I don't know that he was going to make any yardage whether he fell down or not because uh, Greg Ager was right there as well so it's a loss of about a half a yard and bring up the first and ten and a half or second and ten and a half Wimbush stays in at the running back and Williams is in the shotgun he rolls right and he's got pressure oh. he gets he eludes it and then he completes it to Walker up at the 20, still on his feet, and that was one heck of an athletic play by Williams. As two Shelby rushers eluded him, they're both still on the ground. Well, I think they're just sitting there thinking, man, what a great play he made because uh, we brought we brought a man from the secondary and had a chance and just weren't able to make the play. And our guy from the secondary came in so quickly, I couldn't tell who he was. But uh, he eluded that and then made a nice pass, so it's third down and five now for Southwest Onslow. What a play by Williams to pick up six and third and five big play and all kinds of guys in motion and it's Williams calling his own number and he's going to be sacked back inside the 15 by the Gold Lions. Great play that time. What They ran they ran a play where they're faking a, a sweep back to the right and then bootleg in the quarterback and it's a naked bootleg and this is one of the things that they ran quite well in their previous playoff games but we had not one but two golden line defenders waiting and uh, they corralled him and then about six other golden lines hit him and so it was a great job southwest had tough time punting the football last game they're back at their goal line and Shelby blocks it blocked by 28 caleb jolly Or is that 26, Siobhan Miller? Wait till he gets over here. And Shelby recovers it at the Southwest four yard line. Siobhan Miller with the block for the Golden Lions. Came in completely untouched, made a great block. Golden Lions first and goal. The only thing I wish we had done is picked it up and scored, but what a great play. Second blocked punt by Shelby in the playoffs. Didn't have one all year. Clay Husky had one a couple of weeks ago and now it's Siobhan Miller. Shelby late getting on the field with Chad Reed. And a first and goal at the four yard line. Pistol formation. Pistol formation. Raquan Washington behind RJ George. Three running or three receivers right, one left. And it's a pass out to the right flat to Chad Reed. Complete, but he can't shake the tackler. That's 14 Christian Haynes, the sportsmanship award winner for the East, and he gets a uh, read for a one yard gain. I tell you what, I am so impressed with the ability of the Southwest Onslow defensive backs to make a play. Then uh, that will be the last play of the first quarter, Brent Pass. We'll take a one minute break and be back. Shelby leads 10 7 after one.
Parker Farm Service in Kings Mountain has America's top-selling subcompact tractor of the decade, the Kubota BX Series. And now you can save big with this special offer from Kubota and Parker Farm Service. Now you can buy the new Kubota BX Series tractor for zero money down, 0% APR financing for 60 months, but that's not all. You get a $500 customer instant rebate. Find out all the details at Parker Farm Service, 126 Bessie Drive at the Oak Grove, Highway 74 Bypass Intersection, Kings Mountain. Since 1947, Harris Funeral Home has been serving the citizens in Kings Mountain and Cleveland and Gaston counties. They take this time to salute the local sports programs and they take pride in their community. For your pre-arrangement needs, call Harris Funeral Home and talk with Ronnie Hawkins, James Eric Wright, or Bradley Ellis. They'll be more than happy to sit down and help you with your needs. Just call 704-739-2591 for Harris Funeral Home, located at 108 South Piedmont Avenue in Kings Mountain. Golden Lions threatening again. They've got second and goal from the Southwest Oslo three-yard line after the Siobhan Miller block punt. Shelby is in business, looking to go up even more and build on that 10-7 lead. R.J. George in the shotgun. He's got both Chad Reed and Jaquavis Brooks at running back to either side. Two receivers left, one right. Southwest showing a five-man front. And it's a handoff to Chad Reed, and he's around the side. He's to the five. He's clotheslined out of bounds at the, maybe back at the four. So he loses a yard, and Shelby has not been able to get wide on Southwest Onslow tonight or that's, today. That's absolutely true, and it's not because uh, we haven't been getting a blocker out there, but uh, we've been getting the blocker out there, but they've been able to defeat the block. And, uh, and it's not one of these situations where we just uh, – blew the block and just completely missed it. It's a situation where uh, their player's been able to go through our blocker, and so it's uh, kudos to the Southwest Onslow defender. Third and goal from the four, and Shelby back to pass. He's got a receiver in the back of the end zone. It's Ralph Jolly. He out of the end zone. catches it, but he comes down out of bounds, and Shelby with a fourth and four. So Shelby with a first and goal at the four, now has a fourth and goal still at the four-yard line. After a, a one-yard pass and a minus one-yard run, Shelby's going to bring the field goal unit on, and you hate to lose an opportunity to put six in the end zone on that kind of uh, first-and-goal situation, Coach. Well, that's true. It was a nice pass, but it was just out of the back of the end zone. Uh, Ralph wasn't able to keep his foot in. Uh, this is a tough angle for the field goal. We've got a good camera up top, and Luke Hayek puts it right through the middle. And Shelby goes up 13 to 7. We'll take a minute break and be back with the Jam and Jay's Pizza Factory kickoff. Where are you eating breakfast today? Have you tried the Hub Cafe located inside Medical Arts Pharmacy? The Hub opens at 7 a.m. Monday through Friday and 8 a.m. on Saturday. Serving an old-fashioned country breakfast at affordable prices. You'll find homemade biscuits, bacon, country sausage, country ham, liver mush, eggs, omelets, all cooked to order on the grill. Call 487-0511 or come on into the Hub Cafe for a delicious country breakfast. Located inside Medical Arts Pharmacy, 108 Grover Street, Shelby. Your number one choice for drain service in Cleveland County is Drain Cleaners of Shelby. From slow to clogged drains to sewer odors to moving or installing a drain or even adding a drain, see Drain Cleaners of Shelby. With state-of-the-art inspection cameras, locating equipment, and high-pressure jetters, from residential to commercial, just call 1-800-440-CLOG. For a free estimate, they'll make sure your drains are actually draining. That's Drain Cleaners of Shelby. Luke Hayek's got it teed up for a Jim and Jay's Pizza Factory kickoff, his third one already this afternoon. And the rain begins to fall here at Keenan Stadium, and Hayek's kickoff dri drives Jonathan Williams back to his six, and he's running all the way across the field, and he gets the sidelines. He's up across the 20, out of bounds, and Shelby's going to get hit with a late hit out of bounds. And it was. It and was it a late was. hit and totally unnecessary. Williams had already stepped out of bounds, and that's just some of that energy that you got, and also a full head of steam. It's hard to stop yourself 
right there, but uh, that's going to give Southwest a 15 yards that we really didn't need them to have. Well, that's true. We had them back back at the 20-yard line, so this is going to turn turn around put it to the 35. And so let it be known that it, it did wait until 11.36, but at 11.36 a.m., the rain did finally show up. And uh, so here we are. Oh, what happened? Oh, what we couldn't see, Brent, was he fumbled the ball out of bounds. And uh, that's why he stopped running. And uh, so we ended up hitting a man that didn't have the ball in his hand. Wimbush on first down, and he's doing his best Jaquavis Brooks impersonation as he's doing spin moves out to the 39. He picks up three and a half, let's call it four. So that's one of the nice things about having this, uh, having the instant replay. Uh, I knew it looked kind of strange, like suddenly he sort of stopped running, but uh, what happened was he fumbled that ball out of bounds, and I don't think uh, our defender saw that ball out of bounds, which explains why he hit him, but uh, either way, he shouldn't have hit him. It, it, is a, it is a penalty. Shelby with a big rush on Williams, and they get to him, but he stays on his feet, and now he's reversing field, and he's got blockers, and he's got all kinds of blockers out here to the right. And he's got spin moves across the 50. Shelby, again, they had Williams for about a 15-yard sack. And instead, he runs for first down yardage. Wow. He is special. And uh, one of the keys for their season was about halfway through the season, uh, their quarterback got hurt, and they put him in. And uh, he has definitely been the spark, spark plug, and we can see why. Uh, had him uh, dead to rights, and he just made a great play and then made a few other people miss. And so Southwest Onslow, first and 10 on the Golden Lion, 46-yard line. Shelby defensive end grabbed him by the shirt and slung him, and he was able to keep his feet. And it's uh, Audie on the, uh, out of the slot on the receiver handoff, and he gets two. Golden Lions have done a really nice job on that play since the first time Southwest Onslow ran the play. Um, one thing I've noticed is that Coach Devine has dialed up a couple of blitzes, and he has been spot on for the blitzes. And uh, a couple times we made the play, and then one time we didn't make the play. So hopefully uh, Coach Devine will keep on, uh, keep on doing what he's doing as far as uh, dialing up the perfect blitz for the situation. Second down eight, Williams back to pass, and he's slow to go back, and he's got run room again to the right. And he's going to throw it, and he's hit as he throws it, and it falls incomplete. One of those that was close to a fumble. Almost a fumble, but I do believe it was the correct call. So it's going to be third down and eight. Third down and eight, pretty much the same situation that Southwest Onslow was in the first time they had the ball. Third and long, about the 45-yard line. Now that time, Southwest had lots and lots of time, and they threw a touchdown pass. So I imagine we may get some type of stunt again this time, Brent. Third down, eight from the Shelby, 44. Shelby showing a 4-3 look. It's Walker out left, and he's got Demario Houston in one-on-one -on -one coverage. And a timeout, Southwest. We'll be back in a minute. The holiday sale is underway at Full Throttle Power Sports in Gastonia. Apply today, ride today. Good credit, bad credit, no credit. Full Throttle Power Sports and Gas Audio can help. Ask about zero money down and rates as low as 2.9%. Pick up this week's WhatsApp Shopper for some great buys. Don't miss the big holiday sale underway now at Full Throttle Power Sports. Located at exit 22 off I-85 in Gas Audio. Jim and Jay's Pizza Factory is Shelby's home for family food and fun. Jim and Jay's features a pizza buffet with salad bar. Plus, there's a game room. Adult buffet is just $5.99. This price good all day, every day, no coupon needed. Buffet for ages 4 through 10, just $3.09, and ages 3 and under, free. Call for information on birthday parties at 704-600-6182. So come on in. Locally owned and operated, Jim and Jay's... Double reverse by Southwest on third and eight. It's Corbin's flipping it to Jevion Walker, and he drops the ball, picks it up. Shelby tackles him for a loss on the play of about six yards, and that's going to bring up a fourth down and 14. We were somewhat fortunate on that. It looked like we just about jumped off sides. The most important part of that sentence, though, is just about jumped off sides. 
uh, we did not. And so that kind of just gummed up the works. And so Southwest Onslow back to punt. And so the adventure for Southwest Onslow and the punt team, we'll see how that continues. Shelby decides not to rush this time, and it's another short kick. Shelby's got to get out of the way. Bounces and takes a Shelby, well, more of a sideways bounce and down at the Shelby 29-yard line. Shelby will take over there, leading 13-7 to on the Medical Arts Pharmacy scoreboard. 22-yard punt, so they've had they've had three punts. They've had about a 15-yard punt, a block punt, and a 22-yard punt. So we were hoping that the Golden Lions would have an advantage when it came down to special teams, and thus far that has been the case. And it has. Shelby twice has had first and goal and come away with field goals, Coach. And But they did come away with points on both of those drives. Well, that's true. First and 10 for the Golden Lions on the 29-yard line. Hand off to Raquan Washington, and he's across the 35 out near first down yardage. I believe he should have it unless they give him a remarkably interesting spot. And that was some power. They mark him down right at the sticks, and they say second and, and one. That's kind of hard to believe that they're calling that second. <laughs> oh, they're they're going to bring the sticks out because that's just uh, – it just looks like it's a first down, Brent. It does. It's right there. The, the key – I'm, I'm telling you right now, the key to the uh, the key to the whole situation, I do believe, is that uh, the Golden Lions are going to have to run straight ahead. And uh, as long as they make the initial block and don't give up anything in the backfield, they're going to get three, four, five, eight yards when they run straight ahead. They are having an awful time trying to run run uh, horizontally, side to side. And so that is a first down, actually. And so it is the fifth first down of the, of the first half for the Golden Lions. Bigger insurance first down for Raquan Washington after the measurement. And Shelby has a first and 10 at the 39 yard line. We'll let Kevin Hastings do a little magic with the camera. And it's Chad Reed on first down and he powers his way for a couple. Actually, they're gonna give him more like three on the carry. Hit immediately. But Chad carries a tackler forward for a couple. Again, the big thing is we've got to get a little bit better blocking at the point of attack. If we do, we're able to make some yardage. But uh, Southwest Onslow is basically going with five down linemen. All right, second down seven. R.J. George, he's got both Washington and Reed in. And the handoff is to the second guy, and that's Washington. And he's up to the 45 and then pushed back. So again, he gets about three, and it's gonna bring up a third and four situation. Third down and four, and that was that looked like a little bit better of a, of a push up front, but then a really nice job by the linebacking core for Southwest Onslow. Third down and four, this is a situation where you don't have to pass. You can do four or five different things out of this, out of this situation. Third and four, ball is at just across the Shelby 45. Line that makes the 49. And George drops back, and he's got a complete pass to Chad Reed. And Chad, with a stiff arm, gets the first down yardage. He's across midfield to the southwest, 45, a pickup of 10 yards, and a Pigram Insurance first down. Another Pigram Insurance first down, the sixth first down of the game. Golden Lions quick into the line of scrimmage, 7-13 remaining in the first half. Shelby having a little more success with the north-south running of Raquan Washington and the short passing game. That time it worked on the short pass to Chad Reed, and on first and 10, they stick with Brooks and Washington. Michael Gallette split left, Jolly and right split right, and it's Brooks, and the ball's on the ground. Hand off to Brooks, and he and RJ couldn't quite get it right. The ball's on the ground and jumped on by R.J. George, dodged a bullet there, did the Golden Lions. Good job of getting on that ball. It's going to be a six-yard loss, but it could have been just uh, tremendously horrible. The really, really sad thing about that, Brent, is we did have a pretty good hole that time. We'd done a good job, and uh, Jaclavis was getting ready to cut up inside that hole, but he did not was not able to secure the football, and I'm not sure whether it was uh, R.J. where he placed the football or, uh, where the, or whether he just lost the control of the ball. Second and 17, George back. He's got time, and he finds a guy over the middle, and it's a sliding catch made 
by Kylon Ross Flags at the 39-yard line. We do have a flag now. And this has been a, a game where we haven't had a lot of flags, and we would love to continue with that. Shelby may have had a guy downfield. That play took a long time to develop. It was a 12-yard pass reception by Kylon Ross. And a really nice catch by Kylon. And the officials are talking amongst themselves about trying to decide exactly what happened. And let's see the call from the white hat. And he waves off. off the flag. So Shelby fortunate as they get a 12-yard pickup. And it's going to be a third and five. What a great catch by Kylon Ross that time. That ball was a little bit low, and he just went down and made a catch. Southwest Onzo was trying to... Uh, have that catch waved off, but it was a good catch. Golden Lions quickly on the ball. Third catch of the night by Ross, and he goes Ooh, wide. <laughs> George goes wide to Michael Gallette, but the problem is he looked at Gallette too long, and the cornerback had the beat on it, almost picked that one off and had a pick six situation. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a very dangerous pass, uh, even more so when uh, – one of the goal line receivers running uh, a delay route across the middle looked like he was open. So this is uh, decision time for the Golden Lions. Fourth and five from their 40 yard from the 40 yard line of Southwest. It looks like the Golden Lions are going to go for it. They are. That was Antoine Wright that looked like he was open on the cross. And Shelby goes for it on fourth five. Good pressure. Complete to Wright. And he breaks a tackle. He's got a first down. He's inside the 30, the 25, 20. And out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Peter Minturn's first down, Golden Lions. He did not call. miss right that time. Well, you know, there's such a thing as, uh, you know, if you miss it the first time, to run the same play, and it may be open the second time, and it was. So the seventh Peter Insurance first down for the Golden Lions. So with uh, 8 6 2 left in the half, Golden Lions first and 10 on the 18-yard line of Southwest Onslow. Pickup of 22 yards and our first down, Shelby jumps. Yeah, and they, there's no doubt about that. Uh, looked like uh, looked like Chad Reed went about oh 15 seconds early that time. And so Shelby, and I'm looking back here. First down seems to be a, a tough down for Shelby. They've had a minus four yard run. They've had a reception. They went for zero yards. We had a. Uh, a minus 12 yard run and here it's first and 15 and now it looks like southwest may have jumped yep southwest is going to give the five right back to us so that's uh you know that's awfully neighborly of them to do that <laughs> so after all that said and done we had a we had a offsides on both sides and so we're back to first and 10 on the 18. Uh, no times run off the clock that pickup on that pass play was 22 yards to antoine wright and on first and 10, it's a pass completion to Kylon Ross, and he's inside the 15 down to the 12. What I liked about Kylon that time is when the, when the initial block was made, he made a quick cut inside, did not try to juke anybody, did not try to do anything other than get upfield. And so he got five, almost six yards on that play. And again, that's just one of those small details. If he had tried to juke somebody, I think he would have lost some yardage that time. Ralph Jolly shaking yeah. up a little bit. He comes off Luke Etchison on the field. And Shelby with a little bit of uh, confusion there with, with the new guy out there. And they've got things set now. Play clock reset at 25. So plenty of time for this second and four play. Ball on the 12-yard line of Southwest Onslow. Play clock at 15. George looks to the sidelines. Looking to the sidelines for quite some time now. We're down back into about eight seconds left. We're going to have to hurry up to get this playoff. Four, three, handoff Chad Reed, and he gets a yard. And a heck of a job to get a yard. Uh, the, the Southwest Chad Onslow Reed. interior line has done a very, very good job. Uh, I was pretty impressed with them on film, and uh, just like uh, back in 2004, they're a little bit more impressive in person than they were on film. Reed's having a tough go of it running the ball. He's only got six yards on five carries. He's got two catches for 11 yards. It's been uh, Washington that's had the most success running the ball north and south. And on third down, Shelby takes a timeout. We'll be back in one minute. Shelby leads 13-7. Timeout. 
Rice Pizza Factory, 1011 Grove Street, behind the Golden Corral in Shelby. New owner, new attitude. That's Forest City Honda, voted the best new car dealer in Rutherford County for the second straight year. And Forest City Honda's Greg Huntley has been named the best car salesperson for the second straight year. Plus, the Honda Dealers of the Carolinas has named the Forest City Honda Service Department the best in the Carolinas by a vote of its customers. Forest City Honda, ready to serve you with the best cars, best service, and the best salespeople. Forest City Honda, Daniel Road, Forest City. The leaves are falling and so are the prices at s &R Auto Sales in Shelby. Now is the time to hurry into s &R Auto Sales in Shelby for great fall savings. And down payments start as little as $699. Pick up this week's What's Up Shopper for their selection or visit their website at srautosales.com. And be sure to play their sports trivia question of the week. The leaves are falling and so are the prices at s &R Auto Sales in Shelby. Your buy here, pay here headquarters and the home of the satisfied customer. It looks like we're in a power running type formation, and I don't know that we don't need to try to run it. Third and three, rain continues to come down. It's Brooks, and he gets through, and he's down to the eight, and that's right where Shelby's got to get for the first down. It's going to depend on the spot, that left foot of the side judge. And I believe they're going to – I think he's going to have enough for it, but we are going to have a, a, a measurement, I do believe. I would say he's it got is it. a first down. Great run that time and a good good block that time by Raquan Washington and also a good job by the right side of the offensive line. So first and goal for the Golden Lions, 4-10 and clock ticking. First and goal from the eight, third time tonight, fourth time today. Shelby's had first and goal. And on first and goal, it's Raquan Washington up the middle to the goal line. And they're going to mark him down at about the half-yard line. Oh, it was close. <laughs> he reached it, close. it out. And it's going to be second and goal from the one. I like that play call. Matter of fact, Raekwon has shown the ability to burst through that line. And uh, I don't know, half his body was in the end zone. And on second and goal, it's Raekwon Washington. This time, he's in. Touchdown. Touchdown, Golden Lions. They take a lead of 19-7, pinning this extra point. And Raekwon has had himself a pretty good first half. If you could just take away that one little play where he was in the Wildcat and ran backwards about 12 yards, he's had a heck of a first half running the football, and he's in the end zone, and the Golden Lions take a 19-7 lead. Luke Kayak is already surpassed Clint Gwaltney's single season kicking points record. Puts another one through. Back in one minute, Shelby Lee's 20 to seven. Year round fun begins at the Bargain Station brand name outlet on East Dixon Boulevard in Shelby. Keep cool with bobbles. Bobble insets are just $6.99 and complete bottle sets are $9.95. You'll find luggage and bags, sporting equipment including golf clubs, grills for cooking and much more. All at big, big savings to you. The Bargain Station name brand outlet, 4400 East Dixon Boulevard in Shelby, right next to Honda Motorcycles. Open Tuesday through Friday, 930 to 6, Saturdays 9 till 2. Your Yoda Wood Stove dealer is Future Energy Company in Shelby. Come on in now and see how you can save $1,000 on a new Yoda Wood Stove. And be sure to ask about the Yodel Limited Lifetime Warranty. And one easy air control lever will operate the entire stove. Come on in and see the big selection of Yodel Wood Stoves on display at Future Energy Company, 130 West Graham Street in Shelby. Go to the website at futureenergyco.com for more information on the full line of Yodel Wood Stoves. Luke Hayek's got the ball teed up for another Jam and Jay's Pizza Factory kickoff. And He's had four. The rain continues to fall. Kickoff taken at the nine-yard line. And there's a seam up the middle by Wimbush, and he's to the 35-40. And he's going to get it. He's still on his feet. He's pushing guys to the 45, to the 46. 
great return by DeMonte Wimbush. And Shelby gave him a seam, and then after, even when they hit him, he carried a couple of, well, a couple. He carried about six Shelby guys for another seven yards. Well, you know, this is something that you used to never see. Uh, there used to be a rule, and there may still be a rule that you can't aid the runner, but uh, what we start having now is we have these almost rugby scrums that, that, that that's happening uh, with increasing regularity where uh, people are just shoving and pushing on each other, and uh, I don't know. I think you're going to get some people hurt if they don't do something about that. First and ten, and William goes back and gotta be holding <laughs> they call it ball falls incomplete i'll tell you williams went to throw it and the ball slipped in his hand and he couldn't get the throw off then he pulled it back in in an obvious hold and here's the bad thing for southwest that was about 10 yards deep in the backfield that's a spot foul plus 10 Shelby would be wise to take this penalty and send him backwards. And oh, they'll definitely take this penalty. <laughs> Coach and, Ware uh, doesn't hesitate. <laughs> and it will, it will be a huge penalty. Uh, if, they, if they start it from the spot of the foul, it's going to be a 22-yard penalty. So let's see if they move the flag before they mark it off. They're trying to decide exactly where. I think they're going to move it a little bit, but I don't think they're going to move it a lot. I don't think it's going to be... The flag's at the 35-yard line, which is 12 I think yards. It was, I think it was more way. like about the 40 is where it should be, but uh, I don't know. They did They did end up marking it from the 40, so it's still going to be a 17-yard penalty. And it was it was blatant. I mean, it was I almost take his jersey off. And uh, so going to be first down and, what, uh, 27. 27. Golden Lions lead 20 to 7, 301 left second quarter on the Michael Clark Pharmacy scoreboard. Shelby Blitz and Williams is gonna pitch it and the ball's on the ground and goes out of bounds. Shelby needs to pick it up. Is there are they calling that an incomplete pass? They shouldn't. I think they're saying that was a shovel pass. That was a pitch. Nope, they're gonna mark it. They're marking it back. Well. Wow. Unbelievable. That was a, not a pass. That was a fumble. And they called it an incomplete pass. I mean, that was a pitch on an option run. Yeah, that's, uh, that's questionable. But. Second and 27, nonetheless, on the incompletion. And a flag comes out as Shelby's in the backfield. But a, the right guard for Southwest Onslow had moved also. So it's going to be one of these questions. And it is going to be on Southwest Onslow. Now second and 32, Southwest backs up another five. And now, Coach, you got to be starting to think if they can't get out of this hole, that punt game comes back into play with 2.53 to go here second quarter. And you can see on the replay, the reason we were so far off sides is because their right guard went in motion. I mean, he, he left about a second before we moved. So it was a good play. Shelby with a run blitz, and they get Wimbush in the backfield. That's another big loss of five. Actually, they're going to give him forward progress somehow to the 22. He <laughs> never he never got an inch past the 20-yard line. Nope, but and that's somehow okay. they're marking him at the 22-yard line. That's okay. We'll take that. So it's going to be now third down and a uh, uh, moderately priced bus ride. Uh, loss of three, and it's third and 35. Third and 35 which can be picked up. And Shelby's Clay Husky with pursuit, and the pass is complete and hit for a loss as Tyrone Allen hits 29. And I believe that's Corbin's for a loss. So that's another loss of four on the play, uh, even on a completed pass. I believe the Golden Lions took a timeout, which is a smart move because there's going to be two minutes and eight seconds left when Shelby is now forcing the punt. And I'm afraid it took us so long to find out we're not going to be able to go to a break, are we, Brent? No, we'll have to keep it here. But the good news is it's, let's see, 2, 12, 22, 32, Plus seven, it's fourth down and 39. I tell you what, they're going to have to have one heck of a punt to get the ball, to, to punt the ball to the, the down to make for a first down. So the Shelby defense has been nothing but awesome aside from that one 44 yard touchdown pass and that scramble where Williams basically broke three sack 
you know, 15 yard deep sacks and got a 15 yard run. You take those two plays out, their longest play is six yards, and that was a pass play. Other than that, nothing over four yards all night, all gotta, day. Got to be impressed with that. Now, do you go after the punt? Looks like we're going to. Shelby's got 10. And back is Jaquavis Brooks. I see Hayden Hojackney here on the left side. And Shelby sends, and they block it again. And they pick it up. Ralph Jolly recovers it on the goal line. Is it a touchdown? It's going to be on the one, inside the one yard line. Clay Husky, Siobhan Miller, I couldn't tell who got it that time, but Shelby blocks another putt. And maybe Steve DeGree, we can look up and see who got it on the replay. I'm not so sure he didn't just kick a line drive that hit us. I think he just about missed it. I, I think he, he would had so much pressure that his drop, I, I don't know that he even hit it with his foot. I mean, it was, it was pretty incredible, uh, but we were all over it. He right. tried a rugby punt, and uh, Antoine, Antoine Wright, Wright, Wright did 15. get it. First and goal for the Lions at the one-yard line. Well, it's Raekwon Washington time, I believe. And it's Chad Reed time, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Golden Lions. They lead 26-7 with 157 to go first half. That time it was Washington as the lead blocker for Chad Reed. Reed goes into the end zone and puts Shelby up by 19 points. And Luke Hayek's on for another extra point with Richard Wright to hold, and the rain continues to fall here at Keenan Stadium. Shelby 26, Southwest Onslow 7. One minute, 57 seconds remaining in the first half. Good snap, good hold, kicks a little low and left, but good. Shelby Lee's 26-7 back in one minute for a Jam and Jay's Pizza Factory kickoff. America's Mattress Event is underway at Hendrick Appliance and Mattress Center in Shelby, Lincoln, and Gastonia. Get up to 60-month financing, plus free delivery, free setup, free removal, and free bed frame. Pick up a Serta Perfect Sleeper or a Serta Memory Foam queen-size mattress for just $299. Get the sleep you need, guaranteed. Hendrick Appliance and Mattress Center, 1241 East Dixon Boulevard in Shelby, 4027 East Franklin Boulevard in Gastonia, and in the Carolina Shopping Center in Boger City. Former club members Denzel Washington and Jennifer Lopez for the Boys and Girls Clubs. Every child follows a path in life. For many, that path will lead them to a door, a door that gives them a place to grow, to learn, to belong, a place to forge their future. You can change a child's future. Support your local Boys and Girls Clubs. Great futures start here. You can open doors for children to have great futures at the Boys and Girls Club of Cleveland County. Visit us at 412. Time for Back here at Keenan Stadium, the Shelby Golden Lions have gone up 27-7 on the Southwest Onslow Stallions. A second block punt by Shelby sets up a one-yard Chad Reed touchdown plunge, and the Golden Lions are on top 27-7. Luke Hayek's Jam and Jay's Pizza Factory kickoff taken at the four-yard line. It's fumbled forward, picked up by Walker, and Walker is going to be hit inside the 20, and Shelby's defense is swarming right now. He picked it up and then got just barely got away after the first contact, and so he's going to end up losing a few more yards, and so they're going to start inside their 15-yard line. Much better job that time by the goal line kickoff team, and they're going to spot it at the 15, but uh, that's a really nice job. Uh, field position is so important in this game, in this uh, high school football game. So Southwest Onslow has 1 minute 47 seconds left to try to do something, and uh, they've got 85 yards to go. Now, they are fast, and they can make things happen, so the Gold Lions have to take care to do what they're supposed to do. First down play, big hole, closes quickly. Wimbush. It's Wimbush, and he gets maybe three. Tell you what, that, that was a nice hole, but as you so well said, it closed quickly, and we hit him by about six people hit him, and uh, he's going to end up getting two and a half, we'll say three, so it's going to be second down and seven, and the clock is still ticking. We're down to 119. Southwest Onslow rushing to the ball, trying to get something going here. 
Second down, long seven. And Shelby with a rush is Clay Husky. And he's gonna, it's a fumble on the ground, picked up by Tyrone Allen and the Golden Lions are gonna have another first and goal. Oh. Husky with the sack. Four yard line, Shelby will have the ball on the four yard line with one minute and one second left. Great sack, forced the fumble. Husky did a great job on that, forcing the fumble. We recovered the ball, first and goal on the four. Shelby defense has come to play tonight and today and early this afternoon. Golden Lions first and goal from the four. The only thing that worries you is we have no timeouts. No timeouts. And on first down, they're going to throw it. Incomplete intended for Raekwon Washington. Well, that was a really good job defensively. And if some of you are wondering, why are we throwing the ball? Well, we've had a hard time going four yards on the ground uh, you know, when uh, against their defense. And uh, we have no timeouts. And so if we do run the ball and we don't get a touchdown, we've got to really hurry, which uh, so it, it does just uh, it does put a little kink in your uh, in your play calling. Rain continues to fall, second and goal, handoff to Cravis Brooks, and he's down to the two, maybe the one. Clock still at 50 seconds, so we do have enough time. We do have enough time. We're getting over the ball. So we still do have time for this. Uh, the thing is, we uh, I don't know that we have enough time to run the field goal team on if we have to do that. It's a third down, back to pass. Pass rush comes. Almost picked off by Walker, pass intended for 15, Antoine Wright. And Shelby now a fourth down from the two. And this is kind of a tough situation with no timeouts. You want to run the ball if you're a Shelby fan, but you run it and you don't get in, you might not have time to even get another playoff. So, Golden Lions are going to try another very short field goal, but from a severe angle. So it's going to be a 19-yard 19 19 attempt. Yard attempt from pretty much the right hash. So we hit the, we hit one just a few minutes ago. And here's Luke Hayek in for his third field goal of the game. And this one is no good. Wide right. And Southwest dodges a huge, huge bullet. Shelby could have could have put a big deficit on the Southwest side. Still Shelby with a 27-7 lead. But Shelby's got to be wondering, gosh, we've had first and goal three times that we only have got six points out of. Uh, you know, you, you throw 21 on there and this game's over. Well, that's true. And uh, the, the rain has really picked up. I mean, it is, it's coming down so hard that it's kind of hard to see the other, the other stands right now. And uh, so 27 seconds left in the first half. Golden Lion defense back on the field. So Shelby doesn't capitalize. And you know, twice now, three times, two block punts and a fumble where Shelby falls on the ball instead of picking it up. They could have picked any one of those up and ran it in. There was not a Southwest Oslo person anywhere around, but it's hard to, to tell a kid that when they see the ball on the ground, Coach. That's they true. want to go cover it. Southwest Onslow kneels on the ball, and so that will be the end of the first half. Golden Lions leading 27-7 at halftime here at Keenan Stadium. We'll take a three minute break and we'll be back with the Dr. Doug Stroud, Dr. Jim Wilson and Dr. Craig, Craig Thompson Family Dental Care Halftime Show back right after this. Shelby leads 27-7. Hunter Street or greatfutures.org. Bundle it up. That's the way to save, and it's true with Farm Equipment 2. That's why West End Sales in Vail has bundled up a 2013 35 horsepower diesel Coyote tractor with a loader and a four year warranty, plus a new equipment trailer and a new six foot box blade, all for $17,500. Or get payments as low as $301 per month with zero money down. See West End for all the details. West End Sales, Highway 18274 Intersection in Vail. Or for more information, go to westinsales.com.
Transportation Administration of Cleveland County and Cleveland County Transit would like to take this time to remind everyone that illegal drug use breaks hearts, homes, and lives. Please stay involved in your children's lives. Speak with your children about drug use and how it can destroy family dreams. Also, be sure your children and family members buckle up when they are in the car, and if the car is on, leave the phone alone. The staff at TAC and CCT are glad to be celebrating our 25th year of service to Cleveland County. The Big Three are ready for flu season. Come get your flu shots now at Medical Center Pharmacy in Cherryville, Falston Pharmacy in Falston, and Allen Drug in Stanley. They're your hometown pharmacy with no appointment necessary. So hurry in now and get ready for flu season. Get your flu shots now at Medical Center Pharmacy, 607 East Academy Street, Cherryville, the Falston Pharmacy, Highway 18 North in Falston, and Allen Drug Store on Main Street in Stanley just below the woodshed. Stamey Funeral Home, serving Cleveland and surrounding counties since 1900. Stamey Funeral Home is owned and operated by the Tysinger family, loving and caring licensed professionals. Our family is here for your family during one of the most difficult periods in life, planning, pre-planning, or pre-need counseling. We're here to listen, care, and help. That's what families are all about. Stamey Funeral Home, located in Faustin, our family serving your family. Kenny Salinas Power Sports service is a top priority. Their fully trained staff all ride the products they offer to ensure that you get the best service possible. They have an 18,000 square foot facility filled with a huge selection of motorcycles, four wheelers, jet skis, and more. On the water, street, or off road, they do it all. McKenny Salinas Power Sports is your officially licensed Suzuki, Honda, and Kawasaki dealer. 4804 Wilkinson Boulevard. Call 704 824 2787 or online at mscycles.com. Hi, this is Woody Durham for Mark Detman's Carolina Trophies in Shelby. Through the years, I've seen a lot of trophies and plaques, and none appear nicer than those which come from Mark Detman's Carolina Trophies. Their guarantee is not just a guarantee, but a promise for courteous service, the absolute lowest price, quality products, on-time delivery, and most of all, your satisfaction. Awards for all occasions, plus rubber stamps and engraving. That's Mark Detman's Carolina Trophies in Shelby. We all hear about how good the barbecue is in Lexington, Greensboro, and in eastern North Carolina. But here in Cleveland County, we all know that the best barbecue is here. At Austin Bridges Barbecue, Kent and Linda Bridges and their family make sure the staple of their restaurant is the best barbecue. Your choice, pork, beef, or chicken, plus delicious sides, such as slaw, beans, fries, and husk puppies. The best since Alston and Mabel opened in 1955. Alston Bridges Barbecue. 620 Grover Street, right here in Shelby. Yes, Cleveland County, you do have a train dealer. From Kings Mountain to Polkville, from Lawndale to Bellwood, from Falston to Earl, Roland Black Heating and Air will be there for you. They're only a phone call away at 704-865-1375. In minutes, a comfort specialist will be at your door for your heating or cooling needs. Yes, it's hard to stop a train. Again, call Roland Black Heating and Cooling at 704-865-1375. Your hometown train dealer for over 36 years. When accidents happen, it's reassuring to know that quick expert care is nearby. Carolina's Health Care Urgent Care Shelby is now open and is staffed with experienced physicians, mid-level providers, nurses, and support personnel equipped with on-site laboratory and x-ray services. So keep our new location and contact information close by for immediate access to the region's preferred health care and largest physicians network. Carolina's Health Care Urgent Care. 1010 East Dixon Boulevard, Shelby. Our first half, Coach, is uh, Shelby Lee's 27-7 on the Medical Arts Pharmacy scoreboard, and it's 
it could be even worse for Southwest Onslow if Shelby were able to convert a couple of uh, first and goal situations into touchdowns rather than field goals. But nonetheless, the Golden Lions have been dominant so far in this first half. No doubt about it. And uh, I guess that's a good segue into the uh, Okies Tire and Recapping Game Summary. And uh, we start off first quarter with 8.42 left. Uh, Luke Hayek had a 22-yard field goal. That made the score 3 to nothing. With 7.17 left, Walker, 44-yard pass from Williams. Hartley's point after made it 7-3 to three Southwest Onslow. With two minutes and 11 seconds left in the first quarter, Gallette had a nine-yard pass from George. Hayek's point after made it 10-7. to 11.45 left in the half. Hayek had a 21-yard field goal, making the score 13-7, to 7, Shelby. 3.26 left in the first half. Raekwon Washington had a one-yard run. Hayek's point after made it 20-7, to 7, Shelby. And with 1.57 left in the first half, Chad Reed had a one-yard touchdown run. Hayek's point after made it 27-7. So Golden Lions lead 27-7. And uh, the statistics will also bear that out. It has been a dominant, dominant uh, first half for the Golden Lions. Now, having said that, Southwest Onslow is a second-half team. I ha I've seen them on film come back from 21 points down in the second half. And so uh, I, I can tell you right now, Coach Phil Padgett, who has quite a few state championships, he's sitting in his locker room right now, and he's saying, guys, we've been here before. We've been able to, to, to climb that mountain. And uh, I tell you what he's saying. I don't agree with what he's saying, but he's saying, you know, that we've, we've been our own worst enemy. We've dropped the ball. We've made bad plays. Uh, I tend to think the Golden Lions have made some really good plays, though. We have brought some people just – a wonderful uh, run blitzes, a couple of wonderful pass blitzes, and our special teams have been as dominant as I expected them to be, Brent Pasco. So what the Golden Lion coaches are saying right now is continue to do what we've been doing. And what we cannot do is we cannot get happy. We cannot start looking up in the stands. We can't start, you know, thinking about what's going to happen after the ball game because we cannot let this crowd back in the ball game. Well, I inter you, you heard the interview with Coach. One thing they've learned is how to put games away, finish teams off. That's something that they've uh, they've worked hard on and they've they've done here late in the season. They're going to have to do it tonight uh, or this early afternoon here at Kenyon Stadium as they've got a 20-point halftime lead. They can't dwell on the fact that it could be more. they got to they got to uh, relish the 20-point lead and build on it and, and want more. And uh, hopefully they'll come out and do just that. The uh, Chris McDaniel All-State Insurance stat sheet uh, is heavily in the Golden Lions' favor. We'll start first with Southwest Onslow, and it's always a good sign when their leading rusher is a wide receiver, Aurelio Adi, with three carries for eight yards. The only other player with positive yards is DeMonte Winbush, who came in with over 1,100 yards on the season. He's got four carries for two yards. Quarterback Jonathan Williams, who has over 800 yards, has five carries for minus two, including a lost fumble. Isaiah Corbin's one carry for minus one, and Javion Walker one for minus six. One yard on 14 carries for Southwest Onslow. Uh, in the air, Williams is three of six for 45 yards, and a touchdown leading receiver, Javion Walker, has two catches for 49 yards, and Isaiah Corbin's has one for minus four. So just... Uh, 46, excuse me, 47 total yards for Southwest Onslow in the first half. For Shelby, leading rusher, Raekwon Washington, he had six carries, 31 yards. Uh, Chad Reed had six carries for eight yards. They both scored a touchdown. R.J. George had uh, two carries for minus three. Jaquavis Brooks had four for minus four. Uh, one of those was a, was a fumbled uh, handoff, botched handoff that he had to fall on. So Shelby with... 31 yards on 18 rushes, a couple of touchdowns, one each by Reed and Washington. George, 11 out of 16, 126 yards passing and a touchdown. He's hit uh, Michael Gallette for a nine-yard touchdown pass. Chad Reed, two catches, 11 yards. Ralph Jolly, one catch, 24 yards. Jaquavis Brooks, one catch for minus four. Antoine Wright, two catches, 51 yards. Kylon Ross, four catches, 35 yards. Golden Lions with 157 total yards to just 47 for Southwest Onslow and uh, and when you consider that Southwest Onslow had 45 I think 45 yards in the first series that they had the ball 
They scored, they had 50 yards. At 50 yards. So the first series, they had 50 yards. And so since the first series, they have minus three yards. <laughs> Not a bad defensive effort by the Golden Lions. And, you know, we talked during the break, co break coach. Shelby had first and goal at the five, first and goal at the four, first and goal at the four, and three, and three of the times, and they came back with six points total. So you, you know, you kick that field goal, you're up 30 to seven. You, you get a couple of touchdowns. I mean, possibly you could have 15 more points right now and be up 42 to seven. So the Gold Lions can't dwell on that. They gotta uh, just keep playing and doing what they're doing. And, and we were saying, heck, if you just pick up a couple of those block punts or pick up the fumble, you can just roll, you know, trip into the end zone. Uh, instead. Uh, a couple of those Shelby did score on uh, one-yard touchdown runs, but that last one unable to uh, scoop it up and, and score. Well, it's it's not something that that you have time to talk a lot about, but you uh, over the year you try to to talk to your young men and say, all right, there are certain times when you try to pick that ball up, and there are certain times that you don't. And one of the times that you try to pick the ball up is if it's been blocked. If there's been if there's been a blocked kick. You can try to pick it up because even if you don't pick it up and they jump on it, you're still going to have the ball. Uh, what will get you in big, big trouble is if there's a fumble and uh, you try to pick it up and, and you don't pick it up and they jump on it, you know, you lost a chance to have the ball. So, you know, we can be disappointed that we didn't pick up two of those and walk into the end zone. But at the same time, uh, the young men did secure the football. And... Uh, so it's just uh, it, it's a it's a difficult situation uh, to find yourself in, and you sure don't want to want to go over and over and over and say, you know, pick that ball up and score, pick that ball up and score. Uh, there are certain times you pick the ball up and score, and then sometimes what you do is you say, okay, you got one chance to scoop it, and if you miss it, fall on it. And uh, you know, it's just uh, it, it's a little unfortunate that uh, we weren't able to get more points on that. But uh, you can't really dwell on that, and you've got to just uh, tell your defense, keep doing what you're doing, keep keep taking care of the gaps the way you're doing it. Uh, Coach David Devine has done a masterful job of calling the, the the stunts and the blitzes at the perfect time, and uh, you know he has uh, he's been just about perfect on that. And it's hard to do that for the whole ball game. Uh, what I liked was there were a couple of series there that we didn't blitz. I mean, we just ran the, the base defense, and we still were able to stop them. I, I used to feel that if I went to halftime and a team had done a really good job blitzing me, I always felt that they're not always going to get those right, and we're going to get some really big plays you know, off those blitzes. And so what I like to see is the Golden Lions haven't had to blitz every down to make good things happen. Defense has been fantastic, giving up. A 44-yard touchdown, and aside from that, just three total yards uh, of offense besides that play on that touchdown pass. Uh, let's take a three-minute break in this Dr. Stroud, Wilson, and Thompson Family Dental Care Halftime Show. We'll come back and talk about keys to the second half and review how our Aurora Supermarket uh, and Broad River Hams players to watch did in the first half, and we'll do that after three minutes. Shelby Savings Bank. It's, it's just, just better, better here. With local decisions, better. flexibility, better. and knowing how to treat people. It's just better. better. It's just better here. We're here to help our neighbors do better. It's just better here. With our best deal mortgage guarantee. It's just better. 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 Better here. Great products. It's just better here. And two convenient locations. It's just. It's just better here. <laughs> now more than ever, Shelby Savings Bank. It's just better here. Member FDIC. Here's a special money-saving message from Putnam Distributors in Patterson Springs. If you use petroleum products, you should consider a generic brand. Major brands charge premium rates covering national advertising and promotions. Good generic brand packages their own products and meets manufacturer specifications, and they can sell at a lower price because of lower overhead. Our generic brands include Wolfhead, Coastal, AutoGuard, and LubriGuard. Buy these brands and you cut your costs. See Putnam Distributors, 1626 Peterson Drive, Patterson Springs. Here, lizard, lizard, lizard. Oh, no. 
know. It's total mayhem. Hurry, call your good neighbor. You can't. They're not even there. Why, they can't even lend a good hand. Relax. At Pegram Insurance, we've got you covered. Pegram Insurance Agency, 220 West Dixon Boulevard in Shelby and in the Town & Country Shopping Center in Lincoln. Parker Farm Service in Kings Mountain has America's top-selling subcompact tractor of the decade, the Kubota BX Series. And now you can save big with this special offer from Kubota and Parker Farm Service. Now you can buy the new Kubota BX Series tractor for zero money down, 0% APR financing for 60 months, but that's not all. You get a $500 customer instant rebate. Find out all the details at Parker Farm Service, 126 Bessie Drive at the Oak Grove, Highway 74 Bypass Intersection, Kings Mountain. Since 1947, Harris Funeral Home has been serving the citizens in Kings Mountain and Cleveland and Gaston Counties. They take this time to salute the local sports programs and they take pride in their community. For your pre-arrangement needs, call Harris Funeral Home and talk with Ronnie Hawkins, James Eric Wright, or Bradley Ellis. They'll be more than happy to sit down and help you with your needs. Just call 704-739-2591 for Harris Funeral Home, located at 108 South Piedmont Avenue in Kings Mountain. Where are you eating breakfast today? Have you tried the Hub Cafe located inside Medical Arts Pharmacy? The Hub opens at 7 a.m. Monday through Friday and 8 a.m. on Saturday, serving an old-fashioned country breakfast at affordable prices. You'll find homemade biscuits, bacon, country sausage, country ham, liver mush, eggs, omelets, all cooked to order on the grill. Call 487-0511 or come on into the Hub Cafe for a delicious country breakfast located inside Medical Arts Pharmacy, 108 Grover Street, Shelby. Your number medium for the halftime show, Shelby Golden Lions leading 27 to 7 over Southwest Onslow. And it is an absolute downpour right now, Steve Degree. Uh, you ever remember playing in a in a downpour like this? Oh yeah, back in the 70s we played uh Bessemer City one night. It rained so hard at the start of the third quarter we couldn't even start the game back. So Coach Allen kept us in the dressing room uh till it got through raining. But uh, I tell you what, I was on the field with these young men today, and they was real focused. Tyron Allen, I could tell he was real focused. But like you said in the, in the segment, we're going to have to play the same way the second half if we play the first half because they are a second-half team. I wish we would have got put more, a few more points on the board down there, some pick, you know, pick up and scoop. We could have been up at least 15 more points. Well, that's the way it goes, though, and uh, Golden Lions are making their way onto the field. Southwest Onslow now also making their way onto the field. Uh, Golden Lions making their way down to uh, the end zone, doing a little bit of a uh, little bit of stretching, a little bit of moving around. Uh, it's uh, a rule in high school football that when you come back to start the second half, they then put three minutes back on the clock so that uh, both teams can uh, do a little bit of uh, moving around to loosen up. Because you know, after you run around and you, you get that body heat up and you uh, get everything loose, and then you go sit down for about 15 minutes, which is a long halftime for high school football. Uh, it's really important that you get out and move around before you uh, go out in this cold weather because the, the thing about this, Steve Degree, is it's not only raining, it is cold. And uh, it's about uh, it's about 39 degrees here, and it's, uh, it's raining uh, quite hard, and that just makes it uh, pretty miserable. Yeah, I was down there talking to some of the linemen uh, about what, they're gonna, what it's going to take to win the game. I told them that Southwest Oslo was called the Stagans, but they the one got to pull the wagon. Well, that's, uh, that's an old saying that uh, uh, I think I first heard Coach Jim Taylor say back about 1986, and uh, that, became, uh, that became our mantra for quite a, quite a number of years. And uh, I believe uh, last ball game uh, we made a statement, something about pulling the wagon, and uh, several of the former offensive linemen jumped back on Facebook and said, oh, yeah, we, re we remember that. And so very important that we do pull the wagon. Now, one of the things the Golden Lions are going to be kicking off to a second half team and uh, it's important that we continue to be dominant in the special teams and uh, I think if uh, if we continue to take care of our business on defense don't turn it over on offense and make good plays in the special teams 
I think that uh, there's a good chance that the Golden Lions can bring home their sixth state championship. Ain't that something? Six championships. And uh, normally, Coach, when we come, we come back to back. So and we got a lot of young men coming back next year uh, for Shelby. But right now, we just got to take care of business. We got to. That's right. You can't you can't talk back to back until you actually take care yeah, of the first yeah. one. So, uh, uh, but what we have done, as Brent mentioned earlier, is uh, we generally have state championship appearances back to back. And right. uh, so we ha we have appeared here in the state championship game. But I tell you what, Brent, it's about time to. Uh, Come back in, and uh, I'll let you do the uh, let you do the honors uh, on uh, finishing up the halftime and uh, getting us ready to start the third quarter. Thanks very much, Steve Degree. Thanks, Steve. Uh, we are concluding the Dr. Stroud, Wilson, and Thompson Family Dental Care halftime show. We got about uh, 14 seconds left in the in the halftime, and then we'll have Luke Hayek out there doing a Jam and Jay's Pizza Factory kickoff. So we'll keep it right here, but we'll make sure we get our our spots in as often as we can in the second half. And uh, great first half by the Golden Lions coach. They they dominated defensively. Uh, had a couple of missed opportunities offensively, but it was only because the defense gave them so many opportunities. You're bound to, to not, con uh, you know, they only didn't capitalize on one opportunity. They did get six, you know, a couple of field goals instead of touchdowns, but they scored uh, five times. Well, the Golden Lions had the football. They had a field goal, a punt, a touchdown, a field goal, a touchdown, a touchdown, and a missed field goal. And so, uh, you know, one punt and uh, no turnovers. Uh, that's, uh, that, that's a good first half or second half. It's a, great, uh, it's a great way to win a state championship game, that's for sure. Southwest Onslow had a couple of punts blocked. They, they fumbled it. You know, they, uh, they may feel fortunate to only be down 20 points right now. And that's what uh, Coach Phil Padgett's got to be telling his squad. If you're Shelby's coaches and you've been there before, uh, what do you tell the young men with a 20-point lead? Well, you've got to. You, it's again, it's it's a it's a cliche, but you've got to play like it's zero zero. Anybody that's ever played sports, they've they've been from youth football, you know, to whatever. You've been told at halftime you got to play like it's zero zero, and uh, it is important because you can't start looking at the scoreboard. Now, you and I will look at the scoreboard. We'll start we'll start trying to do mental, uh, you know, mental arithmetic on okay, there's how many minutes left, and they've got to do this and they've got to do that. But you can't do that when you're coaching or when you're playing. How important is this first drive both ways uh, with a 20 point lead for Shelby? Uh, to force a three and out versus uh, Southwest Islands like getting a big return here and trying to get some points on the board. Well, it's uh, it's tremendously important, and uh, we're about to see what happens. Luke Hayek steps forward, and he makes contact and kicks a line drive that is knocked down at the six-yard line. And that's Wimbush, and he's got the sideline, but he's going to be dragged down shy of the 30. And so Shelby with pretty good pursuit there maybe not as good as they had hoped and they're going to give one bush the 31 yard line so onslow will take over at their own 31 and they trail shelby 27 7 on the medical arts pharmacy scoreboard they start this drive with 11 51 to go third quarter and let's see if shelby's defense can continue to dial up the pressure that they've kept on for the second quarter uh, of the game first and 10 and it's williams in the shotgun and he's going to roll out to the right. Actually, that's Walker on the, oh, my goodness, is Chad, or G9 Gary on Addison comes up from the linebacker spot. Javion Walker runs the Wildcat, and he gets absolutely drilled for a yard loss. I tell you what, that was as good a hit, and it was a legal hit. Uh, it was a, uh, a great hit. And uh, that was a lot of effort to lose one yard right there. Second and 11, Walker stays in at the quarterback spot. So Williams is out right now. Walker, hands, he's going to hand it to Adi. And Adi's got the left sideline. He's got blocking. And he may have a first down across the 40. He had, and they went to the wide side of the field that time. And Adi's got the first down up at the 44-yard line. And so that was an impressive an impressive play, and that's the first first down since early in the first quarter uh, for Southwest Onslow. So Southwest Onslow feels like they're in business now. They're up at the 44-yard line. They've got their athlete back there, quarterback, and Walker hands off to Wim, or that's actually Corbin's, and Corbin's gets a couple. 
Actually, that was Winbush. I'm sorry, the 24s and the 29s with a little mud on them are a little bit tough to see. So second down and eight up at the 46-yard line. So it'll be interesting with Walker back there if they turn into a, a running-only type team. I don't know if Walker's ability to throw it. We'll see. Second and eight. He's in the shotgun. He hands it to Wimbush, and Wimbush picks up a couple of more. Swarmed under by a slew of Golden Lions, and he's going to get maybe two more. It's going to bring up a third and about six. Third and six, big play, and it may almost be third and seven. It looks like they didn't give him as much as we thought they were going to. So it's, uh, it's going to be third and a, uh, a long six anyway. Uh, we're now at the point where the it's coming down so hard, the officials covering the football. Ball at the Southwest 48. They got to get the Shelby 46. And Walker is going to throw it, and he's going to be sacked. Actually, he gets the line of scrimmage, so it'll be, uh, it won't go down officially as a sack, but he's taken down by, and I'm looking, seven Tyrone Allen. Do you even punt right now? I mean, punting has been, it's been an absolute nightmare for you. Uh, they are running a punt team on the field, but I tell you what, I would be looking, I would be looking for some type of fake right now if I was a Golden Lion coaching staff. Well, the one thing that Shelby's got going for him is there's no Wimbush out there, there's no Walker, there's no Williams, there's no Corbins. None of this of the athletes are out there. It's a high snap. Shelby decides not to rush, and it's a rugby end over end. And actually, it's going to be effective. It's going to roll down to the Shelby 26. And the Golden Lions hold on the opening series. And they'll take over at their own 26 with a 20-point lead here. And it was a 26-yard punt, and that's about as good as they can hope for. In fact, it is their longest punt. They've had a 15, a blocked, a 22, a blocked, and a 26. So Golden Lions take over. And that was almost like a three and out, Brent. So the Golden Lions need to take care of the football right now and do what they've been doing. 9-11 left in the third quarter. And Onslow, with 12 men on the field, is going to get flagged. And well, let's see what I tell you what, that's, uh, that's one way to uh, try to stop the, the Shelby offense is if you uh, go ahead and run with 12 men on the field. And that's going to give Shelby a five-yard spot in a first and five. The fifth penalty on Southwest Onslow. Golden Lions guilty of two penalties thus far. I'll tell you what's happened is Onslow's going with all the playmakers. They've got Wimbush, Corbins, Walker, Williams, Adi, all out there on defense. So they got all their best athletes going both ways right now, and I think they had one too many of those guys out there. First and five, it's Brooks, and he's not got much. He might get a yard, and Southwest is doing the old stripper Rooney trying to get that ball dislodged. And there's no reason for them not to do that because right now if the goal lines are going to be are going to be ready to try to run the ball and run a little bit of clock. Uh, you're going to have to make some kind of turnover happen. So second down and four, I really would like to give the ball to Raquan Washington. Well, that time it was Brooks. Washington is in the game. Onslow just about jumps off sides there as RJ looks to the sideline. They got a five-man front, and it's a handoff to Brooks again, and Brooks has got another yard maybe. And so it's not been Raquan Washington who's – been easily the most effective guy tonight for the Golden Lions. And uh, looks like uh, looks like Brooks is uh, believe he's got a uh, groin issue and uh, he's uh, making his way off the sideline right now onto the sideline. So it's going to be third down and two. And this has got uh, this is generally Raquan Washington territory, but the Golden Lions have gone to an empty set right now. Wow, third and two Golden Lions with an empty set. Washington is in the game, but he's in at the slot. And it's going to be a quick pass over to Kylon Ross. He can't hold on to it. And Shelby, you know, not quite what I, will, what I was hoping for on the first series. I was hoping for number six until they stopped it. Instead, he doesn't touch the ball, and Shelby quickly goes 3-0. Well, three and out. Golden Lions uh, bring the punt team on the field. Fourth down and two. 7.49 left in the third quarter. Hayek back standing at about his 21-yard line. Good snap. 
kick is rolling. Uh, it's going to be, a, again, a very effective kick. Going to be downed at about the Southwest Onslow 21-yard line. So it's going to turn out to be, I believe we were from the, Brent, where did we kick that from? Let's see. We, uh, we, kicked, we got uh, from our 34. About 45 yards. Yeah, 45 yards. Nice kick. No return. So Onslow takes over, and about four and a half minutes have ticked off of this third quarter, and Shelby still with a 20-point lead. First and 10, Walker stays in at the quarterback spot, and he calls his own number, and Shelby is all over it, but he makes something out of nothing as he gets about four. Actually, a pretty good spot. I thought he went out at the 24. They give him the 25. Well, that's why they've got him back there right now. They've decided uh, they've decided that uh, the passing game hasn't worked out for them, and so they're going to take their best player, and they're going to put him back there and try to make things happen. And uh, you know, we had him dead to rights, and he picked up four yards, and that was a pretty impressive, uh, pretty impressive run that time. Second down, six, 7.32 to go, third quarter. Golden Lions on top, 27-7. Walker in the shotgun, Shelby... Flags start flying everywhere. And from the spot that was thrown, that has to be a penalty on the interior lineman for some type of movement. When the uh, when the umpire, that's the guy that stands between the that stands in amongst the linebackers, when he throws that ball toward when he throws that flag toward the line of scrimmage before the ball's been snapped, that is a that is a false start and it was. So it's gonna be second and eleven now for Southwest Onslow. Shelby with a four man front, but they're creeping the linebackers up. And Walker's going to throw it, and he's got a man complete. But Kylon Ross, the playmaker, has got him for a loss. It's going to be about a one- or two-yard loss that time. Actually, probably a one-yard loss, which is going to bring up third down and 12. Again, Kylon Ross, the playmaker. I was talking to him in my uh, current affairs class, third period, and I said, Kylon, you know, we've, uh, we've dubbed you the playmaker. And he said, well, I'll try to make some plays. And I said, good deal. He made one right there, second down, uh, they'd lose a yard now, it's third and 12, so consecutive one yard losses, and Walker's gonna be forced to throw on third and 12, and now Shelby late getting a guy off the field, and it's gonna be a free play, and Walker's running it, and he's gonna have first down yardage, and I believe they'll decline this penalty, as Robert Brown late getting off for the Golden Lions. Yeah, that's one of those mistakes that you just gotta to make sure that you don't make, because that ball was way over on the other sideline, and Robert had a long way to run. He wasn't able to get off the field in time. Gave them a free play, and they took, took advantage of it to pick up the first down. Well, that was, uh, again, Walker just kind of being Walker. But Shelby probably should have sniffed that one out. Is he, he's definitely more of a runner than a thrower. He gets the 12 he needed, plus he gets another two. So he picks up 14 and a first down for Southwest Onslow and keeps the drive alive as they convert to third and long. And on first down, he rolls to his right, and Shelby doesn't take him. They take the pitch man, and now he's got one man to beat. And he's inside the 40, inside the 30, and he's down the sidelines, and he's tripped up. It looks like 45, Hayden Hojack, and he gets him, but not until he's inside the five. And Shelby has given Southwest new life after they had a third and 12 from their own 19 in just two plays. Walker's got him down inside the five, but Walker's down in the end zone. Yeah, he's not, uh, I don't know exactly what happened if he fell on the ball. That's what Southwest Onslow is hoping. He's got the breath knocked out of him. Uh, and the way he's getting up, it does look like he's gonna be okay. He doesn't seem to be, uh, doesn't seem to be limping at all. So this is, uh, this is in that little danger zone right here because uh, Southwest Onslow has picked up three first downs now in the second uh, in the second half. The Golden Lions have not picked up a first down, and Southwest Onslow's first and goal on the four on the four yard line didn't look like he landed on the football. I don't know exactly what happened. Uh, Sixty-three on the yard run. Sixty-three yard run by Walker. How about Hayden Hojackney though running him down and getting him before he gets in the end zone? Greg Ager tries to run out on the field, but. Shelby's already got 11. 
And here we go, first and goal, and they're oh, still. That helped us a lot. The uh, tight end jumped, and so that's going to be a five-yard penalty. Not sure that, uh, not sure that we were exactly lined up the way we wanted to be, but uh, we were fortunate on that, and that helped us out by another five-yard penalty. So, still first and goal, but now it's first and goal at the nine-yard line. And now. Just all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Walker comes out, but they don't put Williams back in at quarterback. They put in another uh, player. I well, wonder if Williams maybe got hurt on that, uh, you know, one of those last few plays where he uh, he got sacked. So now they got number seven in at quarterback, and that's Mookie Pollock. And Southwest Onslow takes a timeout. And so we'll take it back in one minute. For the last 19 minutes. For new air conditioner. Want more home comfort from your air conditioner. Train and Forest City Heating and Air can help. Together, Train and Forest City Heating and Air provide the most reliable air conditioning systems in the world, bringing you quality, comfort, and guaranteed satisfaction. Train and Forest City Heating and Air are offering special year-round Train Comfort Specialist financing deals to make your purchase so easy and your family so comfortable. Call Forest City Heating and Air, your local Train Comfort Specialist dealer. Serving Cleveland and Rutherford counties for over 30 years for all of your home comfort needs. Call 828-245-1379. And remember, it's hard to stop a train. See your participating independent train dealer or visit train.com for complete program eligibility, dates, details, and restrictions. Forest City Heating and Air, your local train comfort specialist dealer. Again, call 828-245-1379. Back to Keenan Stadium. Shelby leads 27-7, 5.51 to go, not, third quarter. Not sure what happened. They tried to bring uh, bring their stud running back, number one, back in. The official stopped him and sent him back to the sideline. Brent. He came out, had to sit out a play, and they called a timeout. So okay. he hasn't officially sat out his play, and so it's Pollock. And he's going to roll out left, and he's got all kinds of room to the end zone. He's going to throw it. Picked off by the Golden Lions in the end zone. Oh, my goodness. What a great play, and that is why. Demario they, Houston. Demario Houston. That is why they did not want to have to run that play. Uh, did not have to want to run that play. And uh, I, I tell you what, it's. I, I thought that when you took a timeout, you were allowed to put your player back in. But we've said this before. There are like there are, there are three different levels of football. And there's three different sets of rules, and so that could be a rule in college or, or something like that. But uh, that was just a mistake by the Southwest Onslow quarterback. He threw it, and there were two Golden Lions, and there's pretty much no way that ball could have gotten by. It, the only thing he could have done is thrown that out of the back of the end zone. But great play. Golden Lions in business, first and ten on their own 20. And it's Chad Reed and Raekwon Washington, and it's a pass play. George is going up top. He's got Ralph Jolly. Knocked away by Walker, a little bit underthrown by RJ. But Shelby going for the home run there. And I know we're getting a little, we're a little bit upset. We want to run the ball, but what the Golden Lions do is they, and what Coach Ware said is we're going to keep the foot on the gas, and that's what we do. And uh, we can be a little bit frustrated, but uh, we gotta, we've got to trust that this is the thing that we should do, Brent. Empty backfield, four receivers left, one right. George back to throw, and he has a wide open Antoine Wright running a, a drag pattern, but he overshoots him. Incomplete, second and ten, and so Shelby. Third and ten, unfortunately. Third and ten being a little kind to Southwest is they get the ball back, and basically they've run about 12 seconds off the clock where they could have maybe milked it down and made it real tough on, on the Stallions. Either way, Shelby leads 27-7, and same set. Four receivers left, one right, no running backs. George looking to the sideline. Got to get somebody open here and got to protect the quarterback for sure. And it's a screen, complete to Ross. 25, he's hit. He's shy of the first down by a good margin. He only picks up three, and Shelby's not only going to have to punt, but they go out of bounds and, again, stop the clock, helping out the Stallions once again. So it's a, unfortunately, it's only 19 seconds on that drive. Fourth down and six. And 
Southwest will get it back, and they got the playmaker, Walker, back deep as well as the quarterback, Jonathan Williams. So Jonathan Williams obviously okay, and Shelby with a little bit of a tough snap, but a good kick that's going to bounce at the 45 and take a roll down to the 36-yard line. So 40-yard punt, no return. Another great if you can get punt. a net 40-yard punt in high school, I'd take it every time, Coach, just about. Well, we've had a net 39, a net 45, and a net 40. So, again, special teams definitely being helpful to the Golden Lions. 5-10 left, third quarter. Shelby still with a 20-point lead. But Onslow on that last drive was able to get Walker free for a 14 and a 63-yard run. Shelby's going to have to uh, see number one and stop him. And there he is. He's back in at quarterback. And Shelby with a handoff to Adi. And Adi's got big room. He's crossed the 45 up near midfield, and he's got a first down for the Stallions. Well, again, that's the thing the Stallions do. You cannot just look at the quarterback. You've got to take care of everybody. And so it's going to be a little bit nerve-wracking right now for the Golden Lions, uh, giving up their fourth first down. So uh, Southwest Onslow has four first downs. Golden Lions has, have no first downs here in the, in the second half. Four minutes and 50 seconds, clock still ticking in the third quarter. First and 10 at midfield. And in motion goes Corbin. He gets the handoff across the right side. Actually, that's 22. That's a different runner. And he's got good yardage. And then he's hit close to an out-of-bounds play, but uh, no call there. And that's the first carry of the night by 22 Emmett Johnson. And Johnson gets good yardage. Another 13-yard gain. So now they're back. They're deep in goal line territory at the 37. Knocked out of bounds, so the clock stops. Four minutes and 36 seconds left. Shelby leading 27 to 7. Shelby defense been a little bit more of a bend but don't break here in the second half. And this time Walker calls his own number. Adam Weber's all over it. And company, it's a big loss for Walker. Adam Weber didn't get him, but Clay Husky did. What Adam did was he forced him back into the into the middle where all the Golden Lions were. So it turns out to be a four-yard loss. And, uh, you know, you wish Adam had made that play, but the most important thing is Adam didn't let him get outside him. If you let him get outside, he may, they may be kicking an extra point right now, Brent. Clock continues to run. 4.05 left in the third. Southwest has second and 14 from the Shelby 41, and it's Walker back to pass. Clay Husky gets pursuit, and they're going to get Walker, but he is able to get back to the original line of scrimmage first. The thing about Walker is uh, when you do get your hands on him, if you don't hit him low, uh, he can drag you a little bit. So we actually made the play at about the 43-yard line, but he got down almost to the fourth. To, uh, excuse me. We made the play at about the 39-yard line. He goes all the way down to the 36. So it's third down and nine. And uh, Southwest Oslo, they're in four-down territory right now. I don't, I don't think you'll see them punt again. Big play. Golden Lions creeping up the linebackers. Third and nine. Walker's back. He's got time. He's got a guy. It's overshot. Pass. Not okay. bad. It was not a bad pass, but the Golden Lions had perfect coverage on that. What we've done is we had dropped – we had dropped uh, linebacker back into the area, and he had to throw it over our linebacker, and then we had the receiver bracketed behind him, and so that that ball would have had to been it would have had to been a, a remarkable throw and catch, and so it was bounced up high, fourth down and nine, and as I said, they're going for it, Brent. Clock stops, 3:19 to go, third quarter. Golden Lions on top, 27-7. Fourth and nine, Walker. That quarterback, and he's back, and he fakes it, and he's going deep, but he's on the ground. We and thought he was on the ground. They didn't call him down. Somehow, he is now. He stayed on. It looked like he was down, like he slipped, but he he put his hand down and kept his knee from hitting, and then it was able to get about a yard. But that's but he first down. Nine. That's first down for the Golden Lions now. Let's move the ball, sports fans. Let's go, Golden Lions. Let's move that ball. I don't care if we throw it or run it. Let's just move the ball. Let's move the ball a three and Shelby actually has had two three and outs so far. In the first one, they even got a five-yard penalty to start first and five and weren't able to get a first down. Last time they had it, they got a couple of incomplete passes and then a short completion. This time, Shelby takes over at their own 36. First and 10, R.J. George in command. Hand off to the second man through, Chad Reed, and he's plowed by number 34. 
Xavier Wells, the guy we talked about in the pregame. And X marks the spot, and it did that time. X marked his spot right on number five. Uh, Raekwon Washington, uh, I know Chad wished Raekwon had made that block on him, uh, but uh, I can see why he's such a uh, highly regarded running uh, uh, playmaker for them. Second and ten, no game for Reed, and Reed hasn't had much at all tonight. I think he's got one yard on seven carries. And on second and ten, back to throw is George, and he's got a man, Ralph Jones. Oh, oh it's got to be pass interference. Holy cow. Oh, man. He, he was clotheslined. He was clotheslined. It, it should be pass interference. It should be uh, unnecessary uh, roughness. Foul, unnecessary roughness. Uh, oh, my goodness. I mean, that uh, was a shot, a clothesline to the head about 30 the, yards downfield. Yeah, with the ball about four yards from him. Pass interference is the call. It will give the Golden Lions a first down. It will be the first Golden Lion first down. It's the 11th Pegram Insurance first down for the Golden Lions. But the big thing is it gets, puts us in Southwest Onslow territory at the 49-yard line. First and 10, 232 remaining in the third quarter. Golden Lions hopefully on the march. It's George. This time he's got just Raekwon Washington and Reed back in the slot to the left. He's also got Mike Gallette out there to block, and now Raekwon moves up from the pistol to the left, and it's a pass out to Reed, and Reed can't hold on to it. He had, he may have scored. He had both Patrick Carter and Raekwon Washington with only Xavier Wells to block. Yep, that's uh, <laughs> just a little bit frustrating. A, a nice, safe pass, throws it out there, and Reed's got good hands. He just he just flat dropped that one. And it could be that he was he was looking downfield for a chance to uh, to make his move, and it just didn't happen. Second and ten, clock stops on the incomplete pass. Shelby still yet to get the ball in the hands of Raquan Washington this half, and still he won't get it. As Chad Reed gets the handoff, and he only gets the line of scrimmage. The line of scrimmage. So number six, not touching it, but he's in there. He's in the game. We are gonna, Reed does get one yard, so it's going to be third down and nine at the 48-yard line. Ray, uh, let's see. In comes Kylon Ross, the playmaker. Gallette, number two, he's in as well. And Raekwon Washington comes off the field. So we're back in the empty, sort, empty set on the Southwest Onslow 48-yard line. Empty set four receivers right. George back. He's got good protection, and he rolls left, and now he's going back to the right, and he's throwing one up for grabs, and it's got to be another pass interference. Oh, wow. my goodness. He hit him. Unbelievable. They don't call it. I mean, Chad, Michael Gallette jumps up in the air, gets tackled before the ball's there. We're going to see the replay. That was well, obvious it's, it's, as it gets. Oh, my goodness. And they call it incomplete. Well, Coach and staff. Yeah, great. Yeah, now, here's the replay. If you can uh, if you can play defense like that, uh, there's no chance. <laughs> That's uh, that was pretty blatant. Uh, wow. Unfortunately, it's going to be fourth down for the Gold Lions. 140 left in the third quarter. Hike back to punt. And George has missed on seven of his last eight passes, and the only one that he completed was for just four yards. But Hayek's punt. Is a good one. Fair caught by Walker all the way back at the 12 yard line. So it's a 36 yard punt. No return. 133 left in the third quarter. Golden Lions have had the ball three times. They've run about uh, 12 Nine plays. plays. <laughs> well, we got a first down on a pass interference. And. Uh, other than that, it's been pretty rough sledding for the goal line offense here in the third quarter. Three and out, three and out, four and out. With only the 15-yard penalty to show. But still have a 20-point lead. Now first down, uh, it's Williams back in, throwing to Walker. He catches it, but you know what? He's going to lose a lot, about seven yards. Ball is going to be down at the five-yard line. Gold Lions took it away from him and ran in the end zone, but they said he was down. So it's going to be a seven-yard loss. They put uh, Williams back in at quarterback, and he threw the ball to Walker, and uh, we had everybody on him. So second down and 17 on their own five-yard line. So his last two completions have lost 11 yards combined. Oh, my goodness. And the replay showed that ball did come out. Uh, before he went down, but the question is, uh, had they blown the whistle? 
Second and 17, handoff to Emmett Johnson. And he picks up about three. It's going to be third down and 14. Maybe they might be giving him four. That's an awfully generous spot, but uh, that's okay at this spot, at this point of the game. Looks like uh, he's in no hurry to get up. I think we're going to have a stop here. Hendrick Appliance injury timeout. Let's take a one-minute break. Steve Robertson will be back. Carolina Energies is your heating and air service experts. They service all brands and feature complete installations. 24-hour service is available with on-call technicians. And this spring and summer, keep your family comfortable with a peace of mind service plan from Carolina Energies. It will keep you cool and save you money on costly repairs. For more information, call 704-482-9561. Carolina Energies. 515 North DeKalb Street in Shelby. Blanton Cars is slashing down payments. We offer down payments as low as $500. We are the most experienced buy here, pay here dealer in Cleveland County. We have cars as new as 2010 models that we will finance in-house. We don't look at your past credit. Your job is your credit here. We have payment plans to fit your budget. Stop by today and let us put you in the car you deserve. Blanton Cars has two locations to serve you in Shelby. Your sports, your sports leader in Big Oak Country, 1390 AM WHS in Shelby, 1590 AM WCSL, Cherubal Gastonia, 1050 AM WLO in Lincoln, and online at KGBroadcasting.com. Back from the injury timeout. Williams' pass is incomplete on the sideline, and that brings up a fourth down 13 for the Stallions. They'll be punting from their end zone. Shelby with two men at about the southwest 35-yard line. And Shelby blocks it again. This one's in the end zone. It's Safety. Almost turns out worse for the goal lines. Is that Siobhan Miller again, or is that 25? I, I tell you what, we didn't even put the block on. We had, we had a, a safety. Uh, a, a safe, uh, we lined up in defense and had, had linebackers we were looking for a possible fake. And Miller just ran through, totally untouched, and blocked it, and it goes out of the back of the end zone. Unbelievable. Shelby with the safety on the block punt. Siobhan Miller second of the night. And Shelby leads 29-7 to with 13 seconds to go third quarter. And this will be a situation where Southwest Onslow can punt a free kick, punt, or they can kick it off, but it's going to be from deep in their own territory. Well, what we I saw them uh, when they had a safety in their, their game two weeks ago. They kicked off from the 20. And, uh, Brent, we talked about how important it is to play good on special teams. And uh, have, you ever, have you ever seen a greater difference between two state championship teams when it comes to special teams because the Golden Lions have forced three, three blocked punts. Three blocked punts, a couple of field goals for Shelby on the flip side, and great punting by Shelby. Uh, you got Hayek down there for 45, 40, 36, no return, all that kind of stuff. And now it's going to be a, a kickoff as they're choosing to kick off from their own 20. So Shelby's going to get the ball in great field position, up 29-7 well, with this, 13 seconds to go third quarter. At this stage of the game, you got to watch for some kind of squib. I mean, you almost have to watch for an onside kick here because the, the, the deficit's so bad. They are going to kick it off deep. Taken by Antoine Wright at the 35. He's already across midfield to the 45 and down to the Southwest Oslo 41. And Shelby, my oh my. They're going to take over in great field position, and they're going to call it the Southwest 40. And this is this is a drive. Coach, I'm going to go ahead and say it. If Shelby can stick this in the end zone. I think this ball game is just about over with. It is, and uh, this will be the – this should be the last play of the third quarter. There's five seconds left, and uh, it's hard to imagine you run a play in less than five seconds. Georgia quarterback, three receivers right, one left. Raquan Washington, the lone running back, he's to the wide side, which is to Georgia's right. Single coverage from Michael Gallette on uh, Jonathan Williams, and it's a handoff to Raquan Washington, and not much going. He gets a couple. He's, uh, he gets three. 
And that'll be the end of the third quarter. Back in one minute for fourth quarter action. Golden Lions lead 29-7. East Dixon Boulevard, across from Super 8 Motel, and West Dixon Boulevard, next to Monarchy Mufflers. Hi, this is Woody Durham for Doctors Doug Stroud, Jim Wilson, and Craig Thompson at Family Dental Care in Shelby. No matter the age, kids, teenagers, and adults, Dr. Stroud, Wilson, and Thompson will take care of your dental needs. They have over 50 years' experience serving the people of Cleveland County. Call 704-482-3281 for Family Dental Care at 416 West Warren Street in Shelby. That's Doctors Doug Stroud, Jim Wilson, and Craig Thompson. Kids love them, and you will too. Baseball players rely on lots of coaches. First base, third base, pitching and catching. But when it comes to insurance, you only need one coach, an Allstate agent. They'll help you with your insurance game plan. Plus, Allstate agents can bundle your coverage for your car, apartment, boat, motorcycle, and more. So you've got all your bases covered. Are you in good hands? Your local Allstate agency is the Chris McDaniel Allstate Insurance Agency. 404 Cherville Road, across from the YMCA in Shelby. Call 704-484-3463. Slow, and right now it's Shelby's game to win or lose, Coach. Second down and eight on the Southwest Onslow 38-yard line. Go Lions in uh, more of their power set with uh, backs on either side, Raekwon Washington and Jaquavis Brooks. And, you know, if I'm going to have two running backs in the backfield, that's who I want back there and uh, R.J. George in the middle. I don't know what we're waiting on. They may be waiting to see if if uh, actually ice will form on me right now. My wife just texted me and said, how cold are you? And I said, very. Uh, I'll tell you what, the, 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 we're in the Woody Durham, uh, Carolina, uh, radio booth, which has no windows, and uh, the heater above us does not work. <laughs> Second down and eight. And George rolls right. He's throwing the ball, folks. He's got Ralph Jolly caught, but out of bounds. Actually, uh, Ralph dropped the ball when he did get when he did hit the ground, but uh, it was out of bounds. Pretty good coverage. Uh, one thing that we can say is that the Southwest Onslow defense has not been bad. I mean, uh, we we could be up by 40 points right now if their defense had laid down. But even even in situations that they've been put in. Uh, they've they've done a pretty decent job. So third down and eight for the Golden Lions now. And Shelby not letting up. They're passing. They got four receivers right. They got one receiver left. They got no running backs. They're they're intent on putting some points up here. Medical arts farm medical arts pharmacy scoreboard. 29-7 completed pass. First down. And I do believe. Right at the sticks is Antoine Wright. <laughs> That's the second time this year I've said the F word, but not the bad F word, the, the funny the, F word. The medical arts pharmacy <laughs> scoreboard. And that is a first down for the Golden Lions. And uh, that puts the ball inside the 30 all the way down to the 29-yard line. A really nice catch and really good blocks that time. And Golden Lions still in the empty set. That's the first time, though, that George has thrown the short pass in this half. and he's, Well, the second time, he completed four yards to Kylon, that time eight yards. And I like those high, efficient passes there. And they're going to throw another one out to Raekwon Washington, and he's bobbling it up in the air. It's and they're fumbled. saying it's a fumble. Unbelievable. They called it a, a backwards pass, cut, recovered by Southwest, and now Shelby's – Still not running the ball with a 22-point lead. 11 minutes to go, and it backfires this time as Southwest Onslow takes over at the 33, and Shelby gives them yet again some life. As that ball is a three-yard loss and a lost fumble, that's going to go on, unfortunately, on Raekwon's record, and Raekwon, for some reason, just two carries this half or touched it twice. But Shelby's defense has been pretty awesome tonight. And they're going to need to continue to be because uh, Southwest has a ball on their own 33-yard line. And it's Williams back in, and he's going up top. Problem is, the only guy there is Shelby's Demario Houston for the interception. And he's at the 20. He turns it upfield. He's at the 30, the 40. He's across midfield and out of bounds at the Southwest 45-yard line. 
And the defense does it again. So how many turnovers is that that we force now? Is that two interceptions or three? That's two picks, a lost fumble, three block putts, and two turnover on downs, I believe. And Houston, with his second INT, I, Coach, I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's more than made up for that one touchdown he gave up early on that opening drive. No doubt about it. Goal line's in their power run set now. First and 10, handoff, Chad Reed. Nothing doing. Gets about a yard. We're, we're, we're in the uh, the Wildcat formation. We've got Ray Quan at, uh, at quarterback, and we've got uh, two backs, one behind him and one beside him. And uh, I tell you what, this Southwest Onslow front is doing a great job. And... Uh, this uh, this is when uh, this is when offensive line coaches. What are they saying right now, Brent? Pull the wagon. Got to pull the wagon right now. Second and nine. Shelby in the Wildcat with Raquan Washington. He's got Buck Usry and Chad Reed in there, and up creeps Xavier Wells, and it's Raquan keeping it, and he's across the 40 inside the 40 to the 38. He picks up about six about yards. Six yards. So it's going to be third down and three. The most important thing here is the uh, clock is now under 10 minutes remaining. And uh, I've officially become a scoreboard watcher right now because uh, this second half has been uh, it's been awfully frustrating. It's been a grand total of two points scored. 9.50 and counting in the season. Washington stays in third down three and he calls his own number, but he's, he's gonna get hit and he actually carries forward for maybe half a yard. He got hit a couple of yards deep and uh, was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Actually, maybe picks up a yard, going to bring up a fourth down and two. Fourth and two, clock ticking down 9.25 left now. Shelby stays in the Wildcat. I like Buck Usher's uniform. He's got paint all over it means he's getting dirty and nasty. And Shelby moves two guys at once. They're set. And it's a handoff, Chad Reed. I, I think, think he's, he's gonna short. be short. He gets, he gets the 35, but he needed to get halfway between the 35 and the 34. Pick up of a yard, and Southwest will take over on downs. So, you know, you gotta give Southwest credit. Their defense has been pretty darn good this half. As they've, their defense hasn't given up a, a point, but Shelby scored on just a safety. And first and 10, Southwest at their 35. But 8.57 to go, and that, uh, that doesn't bode well for the guys on the other sideline. Williams runs the option, and he keeps it. He's run down from behind by Clay Husky. Little help from Robert Brown, and he gets nothing. Again, great plays. Great plays by the Shelby defense right now. The officials are having a little bit of difficulty figuring out which, which hashes are the, uh, the ones to be used, and uh, they've now got it back out on the high school hash right now. Second down, and it's actually a little bit more than 10, and uh, Southwest Onslow, I, I tell you what, they have to be really impressed with this Shelby defense right now. Yeah, and unfortunately for the Stallions fans, they're taking all kinds of time. Their play clock's down to four seconds. They're down by 22 points, and they got to hurry up and snap it, and it's Williams calling his own number again, and he just gets a couple. Flag comes in late. And where that flag comes in, that's usually a holding penalty or a face mask penalty. Four-yard gain by Williams, about four and a half. They're talking to Gary on Addison, so maybe it's a hold. Personal foul, face mask, Golden Lions. Like I said, that's either it's either a face mask or a holding penalty. Unfortunately, it was the face mask penalty, and that gives Southwest Onslow a first down. It's gonna move the ball all the way into the Shelby territory at the 46 yard line. So, Shelby doing their best to, <laughs> again, keep Southwest Onslow's hopes, even as slim as they are, they're keeping them alive. 
15 yard penalty there. Eight minutes left in the ball game. Clock ticks under eight minutes now. In motion goes Corbin's, and everybody jumps. Yeah, the center has not snapped the ball yet, and everybody else is left, so it's gonna it's gonna be a five yard penalty. And I'll tell you, Onslow. I'm a little frustrated by Shelby being a little sloppy this half, and and and, and kind of not getting Raquan Washington going. I, and I don't mean to be down when uh, we're up 29-7, but you flip it over here, Southwest Onslow fan right now, they got you know really a lot of little piddly penalties they're adding up you know they're got three punts blocked and the clock is still and ticking the clock's right still now. ticking and they're taking their own sweet time so Golden Lions I'm very happy with where we are right now and Williams is back to pass and he's going deep and again there's one guy back there it's Demario Houston his third pick and he's up to the 30 he's got blocking this time Big block by Adam Weber, and he's out across the 40 to the 41-yard line. And Demario Houston with his third pick tonight may have just sealed the victory for the Golden Lions. I tell you what, would you say that Demario Houston uh, has a good chance for the defensive MVP? He's got a pretty darn good chance right now, if I'm picking. And it should be just about time for us to pick our players of the game. Coach, here's yours, here's mine. Give my dad one players of the game. Shelby, 29-7, and they take over first and 10 at the 42-yard line. 7-14 left on the Medical Arts Pharmacy scoreboard. Gold line is 29-7. It's Buck Ussery getting the carry, and he loses two. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you know, we, we can sit here and we can complain about not running the ball, but when we do run the ball, <laughs> they are just thumping us and so second down and 12. This half we've gotten from Chad Reed 0 1 1 1 from Raycon Washington 2 minus 3 6 and 1 and from Jaquavis Brooks 2 and from Buck Ushery minus 2. So we haven't run it effectively when we have ran it in passing we're just 2 for 8 for 12 yards so Southwest has all but shut our offense down here in the second half but Shelby's defense has done the same to Southwest. R.J. George back to pass, and he's going up top, and he's got Chad Reed at the 40, the 35, the 30, the 25, and he's taken down there. Pinkham Insurance first down, Golden Lions. What a great call. Yes, I did, the offensive line coach. I just said that is a great call. We ran him late across the middle and hit him wide open. Great pass, great catch, great run, first and 10, Golden Lions on the 25-yard line. That should do it, Brent. That That's really should do it right there. 35-yard pass play, and R.J. George heard me say he was just two for eight, and now he rubs it in my face. Thank you, R.J. First down, Golden Lions at the Southwest 25. In motion goes Jaquavis Brooks, and R.J. looks his way, but now he's looking back to the right, and he's gonna run it. He tucks it in, he's at the 20. And out of bounds at the 19, he picks up six. Six-yard gain, 5.56 left in the ball game. Golden Lions down to the 19-yard line. Down to the 19-yard line. Medical Arts Pharmacy scoreboard, Shelby 29, Southwest Onslow 7, 5.56 go, fourth quarter. Golden Lions facing second and four at the Southwest 19. George flanked by Jaquavis Brooks. Back to pass is George, and he steps up and he throws it over the middle, almost caught by Antoine Wright as he goes high, but can't quite haul it in. It's gonna be third down and four. Shelby going for the knockout blow. Third down and four, Southwest Onslow 19 yard line. Third and four. Filling out my MVP award bracket. And Shelby with a third down four from the 19. 5.50 to go. And Shelby calls timeout back in one minute. 
in Low Mortuaries in its 90th year, providing sympathetic, efficient services to the families of the Shelby area. In Lowe's is committed to these families to make sure their arrangements are handled in the most professional, caring way. The folks at In Lowe's believe the quality of their service, personal touch, and the little things they do add up to the family's satisfaction. In Lowe's staff is available anytime to assist you in any way they can. In Low Mortuary, 231 North Lafayette Street in Shelby. Remember it wasn't raining when Noah started building the ark. For all of your waterproofing needs, stay high and dry with a call to h and Pest Control and Waterproofing. h and Pest Control and Waterproofing does all types of waterproofing, from basements to crawl spaces, from commercial to residential. Call 704-482-2847. 704-482-2847. For H and H Pest Control and Waterproofing, East Dixon Boulevard in Shelby. Since 1919, yes, 1919, Griffin Drugstore in downtown Kings Mountain has been serving the people of the Kings Mountain area with the finest in prescription service. And be sure to come in and ask about the 10% senior citizen discount. And most prescription cards are honored at Griffin Drug Center. 129 West Mountain Street in downtown Kings Mountain since 1919. Open 9 to 6 Monday through Friday, 9 to 12 on Saturday. That's Griffin Drug Center in Kings Mountain. It's still running. That's the thing to remember. Clock's still running, and we're not going to have to do anything with it until it gets down. We're down 15. We're going to Luke Hayek. To try a 40. Six-yard field goal. Some of you guys are probably thinking, well, if we kick that thing, can they run it back? Only if it doesn't get to the end zone. This Hikes is waiting. Snap back. Spot kick is up, and it is just short. 46-yarder comes up short. The cold and wet, not the best conditions to kick a long field goal, but the good news is Onslow doesn't get it where the spot is. They get it at the 20 because the ball did go into the end zone. 4.59 to go on the Middle Clark's Pharmacy scoreboard. Golden Lions clinging, not even clinging. They have a big 29 to 7 lead and they're four minutes and 59 seconds away from the state championship game. Again, at this point, all the coaches are saying, just take care of business. Do what do what you're supposed to do. No big plays, and let's take this thing to the house. Williams back in at quarterback again, and he hands it off to Corbin's around the right side. Clay Husky all over it. No gain. I'll tell you what, you, you could say that the, the most valuable player has been the entire defensive team. I mean, there have been no single great I mean everybody has played you know particularly well today uh, Southwest Onslow they have a really good run defense and uh, the Golden Lions have done exactly what they need to do to put themselves in this position they've dominated defensively they've dominated on special teams they've been effective on offense and uh, it has just been something to behold William is back to pass he's complete to Audi actually that's nine it's a different guy. I think that's Pouncey. And it will be a first down out to the 33. I believe they said it was Pouncey out to the 33. There's four minutes and 10 seconds. 13-yard pickup for Pouncey. Clock still ticking down inside four minutes now. Left in the game. And off to Adi on the end around. And he's stringing the play out. Kylon Ross comes up from the safety spot to make the tackle. That's a gain of five. That was a sneaky five. It didn't look like he was going to get much of anything, but uh, he ran really hard. He did get five yards. Southwest Onslow walking back to the huddle. And uh, I tell you what, if Shelby's sitting there thinking the game's not over with, I can tell you who does think the game's over with. Southwest Onslow is just now getting their huddle. I'm surprised the last three weeks we've played offenses averaging in the 40s with North Rowan, Reedsville, and Southwest Onslow. And all three times the opponents have all but just mailed it in 
mid fourth quarter and said we can't score. They are going up top this time to Walker. Walker, oh my Walker goodness. pushes Antoine <laughs> right to the ground yeah. and then makes the catch. Yeah, and that's, they don't call it. That's that's just, that's offensive interference. I mean, that if you look up offensive interference in a, in the book, if you go on the internet and you you click in the offensive interference, that will be what you see. <laughs> and. Uh, they don't call it. Just <laughs> weird that they're letting things like that go. I, I understand the game's probably won, but come on now. That's that's a pass interference that was obvious a minute ago against Shelby that they didn't call, and now they it's an obvious offensive pass interference they don't call, both resulting in big plays for the opponent. And Emmett Johnson on first down loses five. A little poetic justice there. Well, I tell you what, guys. What what you're seeing right now, if you're if you're here, if you're if you're able to watch this on TV, uh, the goal line defense is now shoving the Southwest Onslow offense back into the backfield, and uh, it is an absolute thing of beauty. What a great great game by the Shelby defense. I mean, with the, with the exception of one long pass in the first quarter. This has been a dominant, dominant job by the Golden Lion defense. Now Williams rolls right, and he's going to call his own number, and he slips down. He gets the six yards back that Johnson lost, plus a few more. But we are now inside two minutes left. Inside two minutes left. Golden Lions. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, Brent Pasco, the Golden Lions are going to be the 2013 State 2A champions in football. 1.45 left, clock ticking, Onslow walking up to the line, 13 on the play clock. Williams is going to pass it, and he is going to go to the end zone, and he is going to Walker, and Demario Houston <laughs> almost had his fourth interception. Incomplete, fourth down, seven. Fourth down and seven, and I tell you what, guys, I think our defense deserves to hold right now. I mean, we're, we're in a situation now where, you know, a lot of things, you know, don't get called and, and things like that, and the Golden Lion faithful are now cheering. Some of the seniors coming off the field now, getting a well-deserved round of applause. Williams back on fourth and seven, and he's gonna be sacked back at the 30. And that is a very apt way to end this game for our defense. And that's a six-yard loss, and Shelby takes over, and Shelby's defense has been just superb tonight. Absolutely beyond dominant. And uh, and you got to love it, Coach, because that unit all year long was picked on, sometimes by us, sometimes by the fans, sometimes by the media, sometimes by the opponent, but not in the playoffs and not today. What a great, great victory by the Shelby Golden Lions. Lions in victory formation with 126 left on the Medical Arts Pharmacy scoreboard. They're going to win this one, folks, 29 to 7. We're going to go down to the sidelines when the game's over and get an interview with Coach Ware. And Shelby's going to win the 2013 2A State Championship. Their sixth state championship in NC, North Carolina High School Athletic Association since 1986. And it's one more snap, maybe two. George takes a knee again. And the Golden Lions. Well, there's still 45 seconds left and uh, we need a little bit of help from the officials to let this thing roll out just a little bit more before they set it. If they'll wait, if they'll wait here, is it third down, Brent? It's third down. Coach okay. Ware got the Gatorade bath. And you know what? That Gatorade bath is cold, but it uh, you really don't feel it uh, at a state championship game. I think Steve Degree helped dump it because he's down on the field with Kevin Hastings. And one more snap, shake of the hands, and this one's over. Golden Lions, 2013 2A state champions. Let's take a three-minute break, and we'll come back with an interview with Coach Ware. Actually, don't go to break. We're going to get an interview as soon as we can. 
we will uh, we'll definitely go to break and give our uh, give our very important sponsors a chance to uh, to do their commercials. But we're going to try to get a, a a quick interview with Coach Ware. And so, guys, this is. Uh, you look down there and you see the jubilation on the field. You see the Golden Lions just uh, soaking it up. I mean, this is, uh, it, it does not get any better in athletics than winning a state championship. Uh, the uh, Golden Lions are now coming up to shake hands with Southwest Onslow Stallions. Uh, this was, uh, you know, Brent, we said this was kind of the revenge tour for the Shelby Golden Lions. We had never beaten North Rowan, check that off the list. We had never beaten Southwest Onslow, check that off the list. And the last time we had played Reedsville, we had lost to them, check that off the list. And the Shelby Golden Lions at 12 and four, the 2A state champions. Steve Roberts, let's take a one minute break because I think Kevin's just about got Coach Ware, then we'll take a little bit longer break after that interview. One minute break, we'll be right back. A child's life is so precious, yet all around us, children's lives are being destroyed by drugs. Take an active role in your child's life. Teach them that a healthy, drug-free lifestyle is their best choice. A word from Hooker Bonding of Shelby, our area's quality professionals, a name you can trust and depend on. Hooker Bonding is working today for a brighter tomorrow for our children. Since 1983, Bill Shuford Heating and Air has been providing dependable service and quality products to the Cleveland County and surrounding area. And the tradition continues today with quality American Standard heating and air conditioning systems. Plus, if you need a repair, Bill Shuford Heating and Air services all brands including Train. Just call 704-484-0025 for Bill Shuford Heating and Air. 213 Campbell Street in Shelby, your American Standard heating and air conditioning dealer. It's where your comfort is our concern. Hospice of Cleveland County announces the opening of their hospice resale store. The store is now open and features approximately 5,000 square feet of retail space. The store is managed by Angela Ballard John. Come back to me, gotta get the, gotta get the trophy presentation first. Yeah, gotta get the trophy presentation. All right, we're gonna go down to the sidelines to Steve Degree and Kevin Hastings. And uh, Kevin, what's the uh, atmosphere down there? All right, they're gonna present the awards, so we'll uh, we'll keep it here. We'll keep Kevin on the on the line. All right, so Golden Lions, 2013 2A state champions. Coach Ware's got daughter Presley and wife Catherine down there on the field with him and his two sons, Stockton and Reese. And they're taking pictures of the Golden Lions squad. Coach, I'll tell you what, Brent. I, I'm, I'm watching this, and I feel so. I feel, I'm so proud of those young men and and uh, that young coaching staff. I mean, you know, Coach Ware turned 40 years old yesterday. It's a nice present for Coach Ware to be a state champion. Then, 40 years old and uh, state champion. And that's a young coaching staff, and uh, it's, a, it's a group of, of fine young men. And uh, the thing I always remember is uh, when we won the state championship, I always got a picture made with my offensive lineman. And uh, it just, uh, it's just a wonderful feeling for that whole group right there as they come forward now to uh, receive the championship plaque. And they're holding it up, and that is a sweet, sweet feeling right there, Brent Pasco. Greg Ager's holding it up, senior defensive tackle. And the team swarms him, and I'll tell you what, what a season uh, these Golden Lions put together. Set numerous school records this year, points scored in the season, passing yards, receiving yards, receptions, touchdowns. You name it, they, they they reset the record books and they've got another state championship. And coach, this just means that Shelby's got state championships in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s and the 2010s. Tell you what, sounds like a dynasty to me. Pretty awesome stuff. Uh, the off, outstanding offensive player of the game for the East is Javion Walker came in at uh, quarterback also play wide receiver, outstanding defensive player, linebacker Xavier Wells. For Shelby, all, outstanding offensive player, Raquan Washington, outstanding defensive player, Demario Houston, and MVP, 
quarterback R.J. George. Congratulations, R.J. Demario. Raekwon is uh, huge games. Raekwon, uh, you know, that big run early touchdown to put Shelby up for, for good. Demario Houston, three interceptions tonight. Three interceptions, and it, it does feel like night because it is really dark out here. And uh, Golden Lions celebrating out on the field, and I know pretty soon we're going to uh, gonna get some words from Coach Ware. Uh, special, special feeling. And uh, I hope uh, all you guys who've been so loyal and to listen to us here this year ha have enjoyed it. Uh, I know that it has been a, a wonderful experience for me, a wonderful experience for our crew, and uh, tell you what, you just really got to sit back and enjoy this one, Brent. No doubt about it. And here comes the uh, presentation to Mary Houston. You hear the crowd. That was a pretty popular choice. Houston with three interceptions tonight. He intercepts uh, twice. Jonathan Williams, he also intercepts uh, the backup quarterback who came in. That was uh, Mookie Pollock. Demario Houston, the defense player of the game, and uh, tell you what, let's take a one-minute break. Steve Roberts, a one-minute break, and I think Kevin's got Coach Ware. And is located at 323 East Marion Street, right beside of Dollar General. Donations are currently being accepted. For more information, call Hospice of Cleveland County, 704-487-4677. The new Hospice Retail Store. Now open at 323 East Marion Street in Shelby, right beside Dollar General. Today's high school football broadcast is being brought to you in part by your local Jack in the Box. Visit your nearest Jack in the Box anytime, 24 hours a day. The dining room is open till midnight, Sunday through Thursday, and 24 hours on Friday and Saturday. And of course, the drive through is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For breakfast, lunch, or dinner, it's Jack in the Box, 3618 East Franklin Boulevard in Gastonia, 455 Earl Road in Shelby, and 102 College View Road in Dallas. Free gas laws from Future Energy Company, 130 West Graham Street at Uptown Shelby. Visit the website at futureenergycompany.com. Back to Keenan Stadium for the celebration. Hey, Kevin. We've got Kevin Hastings on the phone. Do you have uh, an interview for us down there, Kevin? He's wandering about. Maybe it's Steve Degree down there with, uh, with Coach Ware, but uh, tell you what, there's so many people down there, we're not getting a good signal, so hold tight. Shelby 2A state champs. Coach, uh, a lot of unsung heroes tonight. Michael Gallette, a big touchdown catch, put us up 10-7. Uh, Chad Reed and, and Raekwon with a couple of touchdown runs that were big. Clay Husky sacking the quarterback. Siobhan Miller blocking two punts. Demario Houston, three interceptions. We said sometimes it's that forgotten guy that comes up big in the biggest games. And tonight we had about four or five different guys that did just that. Well, you know, one of the things that uh, Alan Ford called and talked to me, you know, last last Sunday, and, and we talked a little bit about trying to, to explain why that Cleveland County has had such success. And one of the things I said is I feel that much of the time we have dominant special teams. And tonight it was very clear that our special teams were beyond dominant. I mean, you block three punts, you uh, do a good job on kickoffs, you kick two field goals, you average, oh gosh, Luke, Luke Hayek averaged about 38 yards per punt and there was never a return. And so it was, it was a great, great game. Special teams, defense, and offense, and uh, that's how you win state championships right there. Well, a few hours from now, our friends from across Cleveland County, Crest Chargers, they'll be going for a state championship of their own, seven o'clock at Wake Forest University. They take on Southern Durham. We wish them well in bringing home yet another state championship to Cleveland County. But right here, right now at Keenan Stadium, it's the Shelby High Golden Lions and that group of young men that uh, had one heck of a season down there ho hoisting the two-way state championship trophy. 
Steve, are you got down there with an interview? Well, I can tell you one of the things that they do is they grab the head coach and they get him out of there to their to their official press conference. And so that could be a possible problem that we're having. Uh, I remember I remember Coach Norman being a little bit upset in uh, 1998 that uh, he almost didn't get to be in the team picture. They grabbed him and took him uh, took him off to the press conference so quickly. So that could be the situation where they they grabbed Coach uh, they grabbed Coach Ware and taken him to the press conference. <coughs> And they may have. Maybe we can get an interview from uh, from uh, Coach Emery or Coach Devine. One of those two guys. I see Steve Degree. He's looking around for somebody to interview. Well, I, I want to say this, Brent Pasco, uh, for all the people, and, and you mentioned this briefly a little bit uh, a few minutes ago. People talked about the defense, and and uh, you know, we a lot of times we get on the message boards, and I and I, I read comments about. Maybe about you know about our defensive coaches and about our defensive scheme, and uh, you can't uh, you you can't find anybody right now that's going to say anything about our defensive scheme, our defensive coaches, our defensive team, because we just played back to back to back against teams that had been scoring 30 and 40 points a game, and we just gave up 21, uh, excuse me, 14 three and seven and uh, it was an absolute just shut down defense all right well Kevin uh, we couldn't get an interview with coach where he was taken away too quickly like we suspected so we'll we'll keep it here we'll give you a, a post game show in stadium and I didn't get the stat the final stats so I'll have to do those coach why don't you give us the Okies tire and recapping scoring summary and I'll put these stats together Okay, uh, back to the first half uh, with 8.42 left in the first quarter. Luke Hayek had a 22-yard field goal. Golden Lions led 3 to nothing. With 7.17 left in the first quarter, Walker had a 44-yard pass from Wilson. Hartley's point after made it 7-3, to three, Southwest Onslow. With 2 minutes 11 seconds left in the first quarter, Gallette had a 9-yard pass from George. Hayek's point after touchdown made it 10-7. to seven. With 11.45 in the second quarter, Hayek had a 21-yard field goal. Golden Lions led 13-7. With 3.26 left in the first half, Washington, one-yard touchdown run. Hayek's point after made it 20-7. And with 1.57 left in the first half, Chad Reed had a one-yard run. Hayek's point after made it 27-7. In the second quarter, in the second half, the only score with 13 seconds left in the third quarter, Siobhan Miller blocked a punt. It went out of the back of the end zone for a safety. And so that made the final score Shelby 29, Southwest Onslow 7. 29 to 7, dominant, dominant effort by the Golden Lion defense and special teams. And a very good effort by the Golden Lion offense. Uh, Second half, uh, only two points scored, but the Golden Lions made a couple of key first downs, were able to hang on to the football, and uh, it, all, it all comes out to a state championship, a sixth state championship for the Shelby Golden Lions. And uh, thanks for that Okie's Tire scoring summary. I'm going to now go over the uh, Chris McDaniel All-State Insurance stat sheet, and we'll just concentrate on our Shelby Golden Lions. They were led on the ground by Raquan Washington, the offensive MVP tonight, 10 carries, 40 yards, and a touchdown. It was Chad Reed with 10 carries for 10 yards and a touchdown. Jaquavis Brooks, 5 carries for 4 yards. Buck Usry, 1 carry, minus 2. R.J. George, 5 carries, minus 8. R.J. George was 14 of 26, 173 yards and a touchdown in the air. Michael Gallette had one catch for nine yards. It was <clears throat> Chad Reed, three catches for 46 yards. Ralph Jolly, one catch for 24 yards. Jaquavis Brooks, one for minus four. Antoine Wright had three catches for 59 yards. And Kylon Ross had five catches for 39 yards. So Shelby, 173 in the air, 44 on the ground. Uh, but that defense was the story tonight. They... Uh, they were lights out, uh, putting all kinds of pressure. Force, you know, Southwest ended up playing three different quarterbacks tonight. They couldn't, they couldn't find one to do the job. Walker could run it. Uh, 
you know, they had to go back to him because they needed him at receiver, and, and they just they had no answer for Shelby's defense. We were able to get pressure. Uh, you know, I got a feeling we're going to see that Clay Husky had a humongous game uh, tonight once we get the final stats, but we're going to have a lot of tackles for loss, sacks, interceptions, block punts, forced fumbles. It was just an overall awesome performance. Yeah, ab absolutely awesome performance. The secondary was, was strong. Uh, we uh, Again, we gave up that one long pass. And then uh, here at the very end, we gave up another long pass, but uh, <laughs> that was uh, offensive pass interference. And uh, there were just uh, two different times that uh, Demario Houston was running down the field with his receiver, and uh, he was the closest one to the football. And he said, well, thank you very much. And he just went and made the catch. And uh, three interceptions by Demario Houston, one in the back of the end zone. Now, I tell you what, that was a big play because – uh, in the third quarter, Southwest Onslow had something going, and uh, they got down to the four-yard line, and it was first and goal on the four. But on that long run, Hayden Hojackney uh, made a tackle, forced forced uh, Javion Walker out of the game. When Walker went out of the game, uh, he was unable to come back in as quickly as they wanted to bring him in. They put a third quarterback in. He rolled out on the bootleg and threw a uh, – a, a pretty rough, uh, pretty rotten pass, at, uh, and uh, we made the interception, and that was a huge, huge part uh, of the ball game because even though uh, Golden Lion supporters were a little bit frustrated that we weren't able to just uh, pound out and hang on to the football, uh, we did keep the uh, Southwest Onslow Stallions from uh, coming anywhere close to the end zone. I mean, that was that was as close as they came. They got down to the four-yard line. We gave, they, they had a five-yard penalty, and we forced a uh, turnover, and uh, that was pretty much it. That was it. Uh, let's go over our players of the game tonight. Our defensive player of the game is sponsored by the J. Morgan Company, and you can't go anybody but Demario Houston tonight, even though I'm sure we're going to see some good stats. Uh, tackles for loss, Clay Husky had four tackles for loss, eight total tackles. Gary and Addison, ten tackles, two and a half for loss. Robert Brown, 11 tackles, one and a half for loss. So, and Tyrone Allen. When, you, when your defensive line is making a lot of tackles, that's usually a good thing. Absolutely. And they did so tonight. Our defense player of the game, though, is actually a defensive back to Mario Houston, sponsored by Jay Morgan Company with his three interceptions. Offensive player of the game, sponsored by Carolina Energies. And we went Raekwon Washington. Uh, he had 40 yards and a touchdown uh, early in the game. Special teams player of the game. How about Siobhan Miller? In low mortuary, blocks two punts. One right. for a safety, One. put us up in position to have uh, numerous points scored. And so, yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a good call. I mean, you, Luke Hayek's kind of a given every week, but Siobhan Miller comes out of nowhere tonight. Two block punts that were huge for the Golden Lions. And finally, our overall player of the game, sponsored by SNR Auto Sales. Let's go, R.J. George. He got the game MVP, 170 plus yards passing, no turnovers tonight, and that was key, leading Shelby to a two-way state championship tonight, 29-7. As a junior, R.J.'s got a bright senior year coming up next year. Uh, we're lucky to have that young man for sure. We got to thank all our sponsors this year. Cle Cleveland Regional Medical Center sponsored our stadium pregame show. Medical Arts Pharmacy, our, our scoreboard sponsor for, the for several years. years. Yeah, 20 years. Or a supermarket and Broad River Hams, our players to watch. Pigram Insurance, our Golden Lions first down sponsor, and there was plenty of them this year. Jam and Jay's Pizza Factory, they got a good deal. Kickoffs, we have, how many of those did we have this year? Four or five, anyway. <clears throat> Oakey's Tire, our game summary, stat sheet, Chris McDaniel, Allstate Insurance, six a year doing that. Doctors Doug Stroud, Dr. Jim Wilson, Dr. Craig Thompson, Family Dental Care Halftime Show, eight years doing that. Future Energy Company, our stadium post-game show. That's what we're in right now. Offensive Player of the Game, sponsored by Carolina Energy. Special Teams Player of the Year, our Player of the Game, Enlo Mortuary. Defensive Player of the Game by Jay Morgan Company. SNR Auto Sales, 13th year sponsoring our overall Player of the Game. And Hendrick Appliance, our Injury Report and Injury Timeout, sponsor this year. And, of course, we got the Marburger post-game show uh, with uh, Dennis and Tom and Lewis and Steve that we go to every week. We got to thank uh, KTC Broadcasting and uh, WHS, Calvin Hastings, 
Teresa, even Kevin. He's right next to me. We've got to thank him for. I tell you what, I don't know if we would have if we would have gotten on the air today. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin was down here working working miracles, uh, hooking things up and uh, using phone jacks. And uh, I hope uh, somebody I hope somebody didn't get an interesting long distance uh, bill uh, next week because uh, I'm not sure how he was able to get us hooked up. But uh, he did a great job of that. We did. We had a, uh, a great night, a great season. Andre, I can't forget Andre back here. <laughs> Andre with his Dodgers hat on, even though we're at a high school game. But anyway. Photos on Facebook.com slash What's Up Shopper. The first half is already up. Uh, we'll have some highlights on YouTube. Uploaded Facebook.com slash What's Up Shopper. Go check out the photos. What's Up Shopper on Facebook. YouTube also, What's Up Shopper, Facebook, What's Up Shopper. You got good video, good pictures from Andre and Kevin and company. And, uh, create, of course, they make it possible for Jeff and I and Steve to be on there every Friday night. For Jeff Jones, Steve Degree, Kevin, Calvin, Andre, Steve Roberts back at the studio, and, and everybody on our postgame show, uh, we're wrapping up the season. We'll see you next year. Golden Lions, 2A state champions for 2013. Take it away, Steve.